So Dallas is like one of the most boring cities in the U.S. You went I, to the wrong place. What? You went to the wrong place. Where was I supposed to go in Dallas? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Okay, uh, the grassy knoll? The eyeball? Don't. No, the yeah. eyeball is in fucking Vegas. No, they have an no. eyeball too now. <laughs> No, so there's this, no there's up. the sphere orb digital eyeball. Then there's the stagnant eyeball in a garden. Yeah, it's like I've seen it's it. It's a curiosity, is a, a, what they call it now. And uh, <laughs> the curiosity, what are we like paladins and goddamn D and D all of a sudden? Yeah, dude, it gives you plus five mana. It doesn't give me anything. It creeps me out a little bit because I've seen it one time, and I was well, then, with my girlfriend. I was with my girlfriend. And I was like, "Do you want to go see this giant eyeball?" She was like, "Hell no!" And I said, "That's fair." I mean, look at your beard, bro. You obviously chose the priest build, so it wasn't <laughs> yeah. going to do anything for you. I mean, look, am I going to get any enchantments from this? Yeah. Is this going to enrich me in any Ooh, meaningful like way? It gumballs. <laughs> right. I mean, like, like I've had a little toy. Is it toy. made of gumball? I wonder. <laughs> now, if I could eat it. I mean, if you got to lick it to gain the enchantment. Oh. <laughs> there's licking toes, there's licking eyeballs, and you get special powers. But yeah, this is an attraction in Dallas, Texas. I had a work event in Dallas, and my boss goes, hey, do you want to come down an extra night before? And then so we have two nights in Dallas. You know, one to hang out. Another time to catch up. What is up, everybody? We're in the pre-show right now. Ricardo in the house. Rico here. DJ Lemon. Christina is in the house. And so I go, sure. We went to um, San Antonio for a drag show. It was a drag show Christmas. It's a great time. And then we've been here, of course, in Austin. And then uh, she's been through Houston on the way to New Orleans. So she had never been to Dallas. And I said, okay, let's go to Dallas an extra night. And we... I thought you would have loved the jazz balcony once Demi told me about it. Um, so, I, I asked Marcos, "Hey, man, what is there to do in Dallas?" And you're, you asked a friend who yeah, lives there. I don't know shit about certain places. I just have connections. Should have asked Paco. I Paco. Oh yeah, he knows everything. I could have done the same thing. I could have done any of this stuff, but I was trying to. She's pretty good at researching, and I was like, she couldn't find anything really that caught her eye. And so you had the recommendations there of all those things, and to your friend's credit, they all looked very nice. That being said, all of that glitters is not gold in my opinion, and that started with the hotel I stayed at. Now, if my boss ever watches this, she never will. I'm yeah, grateful. Pre-show gets cut. I'm yeah. I'm grateful <laughs> yeah. for no pre-show never gets cut. Hardly ever. I'm grateful for the hotel. Thank you for spending two nights at letting me say two nights at that hotel. And when you look at the website, fantastic. Looks great. I'm not going to say the name, but you can read it if you're a video listener right there. It's got City View Rooms, Hotel Happenings, Eat and Drink, Loyalty Programs, 2022's Traveler's Choice Award, Rooftop Bar, with the view of downtown Dallas. That's like their big thing, well, the thing right? The thing is that Austin oh. has so many rooftop bars that I'm like, they're all kind of lame that I don't want to... You say rooftop bar, and all I hear is thirty dollars for a Michelob. <laughs> well, so that was the thing. <laughs> well, that's the thing. So look, it's got an infinity pool. Looks nice and chic and everything like that. Looks looks great, right? Why do they call them infinity pools? It clearly has an end. Well, do you, <laughs> because if you go real close to the bottom, you can see it's like the horizon, like you can any see pool. The end. <laughs> It's infinity. <laughs> see? See? Because JJ. There is an element of nice things that are just lost on the. <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah. No, <laughs> JJ. You, yeah, you don't see the allure of this because this place I, is. I don't either, but. Oh, no, I, no, you're right. Yeah. No, you too. You guys, you guys have the same brain that I have, but I was like, you know what? It's a free hotel for two nights. City. Yeah, city view rooms. It's events calendar. Pool because if you don't see the edge, do we have a you're city going view? over it. I was about to say, do we have a city view apartment? Like. No, <laughs> we we see the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, about that. So we we get to the place and we're like, okay, we're hungry. We weren't really hungry on the way up, but let's like go check out this rooftop bar. It's gonna be awesome, right? Here we go. There's a there's a, there's a picture right there. Look at that. That looks cool. So swanky and hip, and it does look like that in sorts, you know, in the lobby and whatnot. So we get up there, and I'm like, twelve dollars for Michelob Ultra. Let's see what they got. And the prices weren't so bad. The problem was, we waited for 10 minutes, nobody was per- at the bar. Nobody was manning the bar at all. Nobody. And it was like 30 minutes before the food truck or the food ended, and we were hungry, and we were thirsty, and we ended up just going to fucking Carl's Jr. because literally nobody showed up. We literally could have stole all the tips from the jar. And I was like, okay, that's strike one. Strike one from this bullshit, okay? 
two or three different strikes already, but go on. Well, no. I mean, look, it, I'm going to give it a little bit of leniency because it's free. I'm not paying for anything. Like I said, my boss is nice enough to get the hotel. I'm not going to be too big of a complainer until you look at the room. Now, JJ, like I said, you are you have an affinity for sniffing out bullshit. Would you think this is a comfortable uh, uh, accommodation here? Or do you see anything inherently wrong with this right off the bat? Why do I see a pipe? Why do you see a pipe, you ask? Because it is industrial chic, man. And so you, all the piping, all the electrical units, everything there, you can see. And all the walls, unfinished. And all the barbed wire and all the, uh, uh, what was the it called, rebar? The chic I acknowledge is the iron chic. Uh <laughs> So unless you can get me in that room, I don't give a crap. Well, what? there is no Iron Sheik room. <laughs> no. <laughs> and he is dead. These curtains right here. So we we get there and we see the unfinishedness. We see it's, it's supposed to be hip. There's arts, uh, art all over the place. Uh, we got our cross so If it were the Iron Sheik room, it would make you humble. I, re- <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of references there I could be making, but I don't know enough about the Iron Sheik other than he fucking hated well, Hulk Hogan. Like two away. That was one of them. <laughs> one away. There you go. Bathroom with no door. There's no door, no sliding door. Just walk in. Dude, it's made in. for sex. You can have a sex ki- a kitchen. <laughs> you, can have a, you can have a sex kitchen. You can have a sex bathroom, shower. Yeah. But there's no handlebars. There's no extra footholds or anything like that. Yeah, doggy style in the shower is not like super fun, particularly. No, you can pick her up. Oh, well, that's too slippery. That's high risk. <laughs> that is super high risk. The, that's the turn on. Toto's bro. on the glass. <laughs> that is too. That's not enough friction for my taste. I need plant. Plant foots, you know, like I, I, if I had cleats while having Doesn't sex, have an edge? that would help. Doesn't have like a corner that it, you can dig into. No, it's <laughs> too wide. It's super too wide, like to to bridge the gap. And, and then then you got the 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 kind of standalone sink thing that's a little too far away while you're shaving, so you have to like reach over. It's not really fun. But man, we set up. We're like, okay, fine. This is great. But we're on the second floor, you know, we have this little, actually, this might actually be the fucking room we were in. And so we, they say, you know, street views and all this and that, right? And we close the blinds and <laughs> we both like, just kind of like lay there. We look, there's two beams of light from the outside that are just shooting from the sides because the blinds aren't wide enough to shut out all the light. So guess who woke up at 7.30 a.m. in the morning just from the sunlight? Fucking this guy. And I felt bamboozled, and my feelings were hurt, and th- we had a late night. We're, I'm, a, I'm obviously a night owl. I got in. I ate late, so I was super up. It was like 3 in the morning. Fall asleep. So I wake up early, whatever, and I'm just walking around, walking around, and she's still asleep. I'm working. I have work still. And all of a sudden, fucking fire alarm goes off at like 12 o'clock at noon. And I'm like, are we dying? Is the world on fire? We go downstairs, like in like jammies, essentially, and we're like, all right, hey, there's a, is anybody? Nobody's panicked downstairs. They go, is there a fire? And the lady's just up front. Oh no, okay. there's a fire alarm. We just we texted everybody. We, we called everybody, let people know. And I was like, I didn't get a call. And they're like, oh well, we tried. And so I thought I was gonna die, and they're just so nonchalant. How could That's you? like strike two. You couldn't have died in that fucking room. The walls are brick. <laughs> There's exposed plumbing. The shower has no door, so you could have just ran in there and turned I, it on. I, I'm like, <laughs> fire can't fun. get you in there, dude. Uh, when you talk about exposed plumbing, I could hear the upstairs people's toilet flush, and I, the pipe was above the toilet below. <laughs> that was gross. And so they were practicing fire Pipe drills. Above the toilet, it looks like it was above your bed. <laughs> no, no, there, no, there was the uh, the court mandated uh, fire suppressant. That's speaking of fire, uh, right above our bed. The line went right above the bed. It was there was no table for eating. That's like the deluxe uh, room. It was just like this cacophony of uh, oh, also the parking lot was shared with the bar next door. And at a certain point, there was just no parking because there was too many people drinking at the bar next door. So, am I missing anything? I mean, you should have. Don't you get valet service with that kind of? I, no, I didn't get valet service. They go park in the lot across the street, so I had to go park in the lot across the street. Oh, once like, it had overflow. Because I'm like, a lot of this sounds like the hotel I stayed in in Pittsburgh, and I did enjoy that hotel. But I mean, I've, it was Pittsburgh. I was like, I feel like I can fight crime like Daredevil from this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well we heard all the crime on the outside because we were on the second floor, on the street corner across from the police station. So. Any crimes that were going on, woo, fucking right off the bat. It was, 
like not miserable, but really inconvenient. And at the end of the day, we didn't even find anything to do extracurricular because I've even heard Deep Ellum, the big downtown hippie spot that you go down to party and club, is now full of gun violence and danger. So just don't stay out past twelve. What's the point of going out if you're not staying out past twelve? I mean, it's only two hours, isn't? Come on, man. Come, I don't know, gotta man. close out I... the place, dude. There's Deep Ellum. You don't normally close out places. <laughs> I do? Shit, that's my M.O. Shit, look at this. I could be out here and then it's all dangerous because look at, I could go see cool robots. Well, I'm pretty sure after Glock o'clock, everything closes. That's the new closing out. <laughs> 12 o'clock is Glock o'clock? Yeah. That's so boring. That's two hours shy of Fresno's closing hour. Fresno, one of the most boring cities in America. 10 o'clock, everything shuts so down. It's still there. better. <laughs> <laughs> but for a major city with an NFL team, not much. I don't know. And that city's not even in Dallas. It's in Arlington, which is a whole different as city. As far but. as I know, Dallas is a hoity-toity city. Like, right. It's not exactly on my oh, top five. Was it hoity-toity? Good. God. So just for the record, the people that were on the rooftop bar, dude, they were... They, they, I could smell them smelling their own shit and liking it. They were just so... like I was in a Spider-Man shirt. Like That's how like out of dress I was. And they were having cocktails next to the fire talking about... I don't know. What do, what do hoity-toity people talk about? Usually oil. Oil. Art. Yeah, just oil. What you say? Uh, art. Art, yeah. Mm, I found something like this art gallery. They were just like, so yeah, fuck. Yeah, so how was the Cheech? <laughs> <laughs> the Cheech is a Chicano in, was it, where was it from? What was the I city mean, it was I will, I will give Sam, there's a difference between a fucking Mexican-American cultural thing and then like the art f- galleries that they're talking about that are like. I said they were talking about oil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I don't know, man. I don't fit in with a lot of those people, but I do think that sometimes their food is good. That's about it. Oh, man. I was going to get baited, dude. I'll have the re- one of the recommendations for sure. Now, this is the fat ass in me and the, the person who likes to save money. Japanese restaurant. Oh, the Look, Japanese, the ramen jazz place? Yeah. Sa- no, it was I'm one of them. Yeah, yeah. it was probably the that. Only? Huh? I don't know. There's, it's I'm like Yaya yeah, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, it's whatever. But Paco <laughs> took me to one place that was like next to a bar, but it was super hoity-toity. I just remember that it had an Oni on the receipt, and I was like, this is a, I mean, this is a kick-ass receipt. I'm going to hold on to this. <laughs> I was about to say, like, no disrespect to Jazz. Martin loves Jazz. Like he's jazz. one of the most down-to-earth people in the world. Mm-hmm. You like Jazz, like and jazz. that's not a bad thing. But Jazz in a restaurant, hoity-toity as fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> no, me and Martin go to underground jazz clubs here in Austin. Like, legitimately, it's under the ground. Um, but no, so... I saw one of the restaurant recommendations, and I looked at like the layout. I was like, "Oh, that's a pretty good bowl of ramen. Looks good." But my, uh, what is it? What's the word where you save money? Uh, what is it called? Fiscally, um, not cheap. I, you know, the funny a, thing is, I can only think of this word in Spanish. Like your frugal. Co- your frugal. Co- there you yeah, go. Your codo came out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. So fr- my frugal, my frugalness, I guess. Yeah. Saw a picture of this. And I was like, oh, it looks like a good bowl of ramen. But then I noticed that the bottom taper is still real small. I go, so that's only like half a cup of broth with all that other nonsense. That's not enough for noodles and broth to be happy. I mean, when I first saw the ramen tatsuya place, I did think it looked small. The bowl just is deceptively big. No, the de- I, it's not deceptively big because the big the opening is big. You know, because ramen tatsuya, they serve it in a big bowl, but it's big all the way through. This bowl tapers to the bottom, and I'm being cheated. And all that's all the other hoity toity places. I think that... it just has like a bigger platform, so it looks bigger like as you're looking down. On right. The that's see, I'm being deceived, and I didn't like that. And so I was like, <laughs> you know what? There you go. Hoity toity like bit small portions and like fancy gra- glassware. So yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Fuck that. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. My job is trying to make me hoity toity. It's trying to put me in the the liberal elites, and I don't fuck with that in the sense that. Well, yeah, dude, you're one of only three people in your company. They have you have to rub elbows with those guys. Yeah, but I don't want to. No, the people are cool. Actually, we had a, it was a holiday party I had to attend, and they were cool. Everybody at the party was cool. We had uh, catered tamales from this one place that were pretty good. We had catered that sliders. Hoity toity. Dude, uh, to be fair, though, they were just in like. Foil. Tamales should only come from your grandma and trench coats. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go, I was going to go uh, baby carriages, because that's where I see them at the Walmart. You go. Like down this road a little bit. Uh-huh. There's a bar. There's a. It used to be a hipster bar, but now it's just like everyone fucking goes there. Uh-huh. There's a dude in like a suburban that shows up <laughs> at like one a one thirty, and he's like, "Hey, you want some?" Have they <laughs> raised the prices though? They used to be a dollar each. 
Well, we buy them, at least in Lubbock. I haven't seen the suburban man here. <laughs> but in Lubbock, they were by the dozen. That was eight or nine bucks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, no, that's what the... Um the uh, we had the lady in the um, ba- with the baby carriage walking around the parking lot all crazy. She sold one for a dollar or twelve for ten bucks or whatever. And you so buy three, you get a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you want this hamster? Oh, it's... <laughs> Shout out to the boys who sold hamsters and weed together, or was it weed and ham? I guess no, you sold hamsters that came with free weed because if you sold weed, that'd be illegal. So technically, you were selling the hamsters. It's past the age of like I can be charged for this. I'm, I don't know Statue if anybody would want to. And then, like, the weed is smoked up. Where's the evidence? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like clipping that and just using that as a phrase. I'm the pretty sure there's no up. hamsters remaining, neither. <laughs> <laughs> no, their progeny lives on, JJ. Have some faith. Have some faith in your paternal instincts of being able to find the proper parents Bro, for I didn't the... know hamsters hibernate. <laughs> Okay, yeah, okay. I hear them laughing in the, the peanut gallery. A lot of people apparently didn't, and a lot of hamsters have been buried alive, according to a new TikTok trend. Have you seen that? Uh, yeah. No. Oh, my. Yeah, so people are discovering that hamsters hibernate. Yeah, but, I mean, that hamster little, wasn't dead, bro. A, a little TMI uh, just behind the scenes, because we met Tina. Oh, my God. And uh, she just gifted 10 tier one subs. Woo! Um, not this week, because we obviously didn't have a show on Tuesday, but I think she told JJ last week. Her bank account was like, we don't believe, we think this is fraud. <laughs> she told me that too. So, okay. So if you side, sidebar to Christina, then back to dead hamsters. Christina messaged us saying, yeah, my bank thinks this is fraud. I want you to be a fan like Christina. <laughs> I want you to donate to them excellence Commit so fraud. much yeah, <laughs> that you're stealing credit cards and putting them on them excellence. No, I want you to, to make sure your bank is like, are you sure you want to keep donating to these jokers? And then have you say yes. Yes, I do. And the funny thing is that I told Christina, like, hey, look, now that I met you, I feel bad taking your money because now you're people to me. You're not just an internet name, which, by the way, you are an internet name until I meet you. And then I'm like, oh, you're a person. So sorry for those who I haven't met. Social media kind of counts, and definitely the Discord counts because I follow you on Discord. I know Discord? you a little better. JJ, enough <laughs> is too much. As someone actually asked, "What's the link to the Discord?" I go, "We're really bad at sharing this. We'll get it there." I eventually. didn't even know we had one. Yes, yes, we do, JJ. We have a Discord. Did you know? No. And if you don't know, now you know. So I'm gonna forget next week. It's all right. It's part of the bit. Anyway, <laughs> hey, actually, are you even on next week? I don't. We haven't made the schedule yet. We haven't made the schedule yet, but. Be like Christina. Donate 10 at a time. That's hamster still. Donate 10 <laughs> at a time. That was you, Boring Mark. Welcome, Boring Mark. Hopefully you made it to the Discord safely. Looks like I'm flying to Austin. There you Woo! go, Rico Hero. Let's do it. I'll take you to wrestling, bro. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing, because we like friends, and so if you want to come have a good time, you'll at least have one shepherd here at the Mexicans to show you the way. It's probably going to be Marcos if he's not out of town. Literally, that's the only thing, would be if he's literally out of town or not. I don't think I'm leaving Sometimes tonight, it's me. You can that's ask true. Elijah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is, uh, yeah, you haven't never been Elijah, I don't think, ever. Um, by the way, Eli without the L. Badgie, you didn't miss, miss anything. We're still in the pre-show. But we are actually going to move on to the regular show because we're 37 minutes in from the start of the ads. So, that said, don't throw away your hamsters because they do hibernate. A lot of people admitting that they fucking killed their hamsters. A barrel actually not killed, buried alive. They which, can dig themselves out. Do you think so? Well, yeah, you're supposed to bury them. Right. And then they dig themselves out. Children are also really bad at what? burying them. It's not like they're six feet down. That's true. But at the same time, hawks still exist in most neighborhoods. Are oh, yeah. Very scary pigeons or cats. I mean, fuck hamsters. Like, um, in certain places, like, basically California up, eagles and shit can kill your birds and dogs. That is actually very true. <laughs> Chihu- Make sure your chihuahuas are locked away tightly. If you have hawks, eagles, or owls in your neighborhood, I like God, this bottle I'll, opener. I definitely, <laughs> An Allen wrench. I, was about to say, I definitely forgot about owls existing because it they're works. evil. They live in barns. Fuck those owls. Oh yeah, owls are owls are a lot in Northern California. You can find them in like all the redwoods and stuff. No, no, we've seen them here. We just yeah, owls we are bad. We oh. have some that are elves, some that are barns, and some that are witches. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We're actually going to get into that because I never understood. Uh, owls as lechuzas as witches and that's going to be a disconnect between our hispanic heritage growing up with that said let's talk about our hispanic heritage disparities growing up by talking about christmas we'll be right back after this intro to start the show
Welcome, everybody. See, Marcos, it's earlier. I've learned that it's earlier. Welcome to <laughs> Maso Menos Mexicanos. It's the show that we haven't done in a long time, but it is time to return to the Muscle Menos Mexicanos podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Muscle Menos Mexicanos podcast. I'm Sammy Gonzalez, a.k.a. The Mexcellence. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's been a while. We missed last episode with the sports show with a series of errant errors and sicknesses and emergencies. Everybody's okay to our knowledge. Marcos, you scared the hell out of everybody. I'm sorry. I stubbed my toe. Yeah, JJ stubbed his toe. We were all very concerned. We said, call it off. <laughs> call it all off. We can't move on unless JJ's okay. Speaking of JJ, so is like, JJ okay? Yep. Hey, I was everybody's about to say, like, JJ, I understand yeah. like some degree of like you guys care about us, but family emergency usually means somebody else around us is <laughs> no going through only family. us. <laughs> My sister Taylor. We're, first not of all. Fa- we're not family. I wouldn't say. I would. I would probably I, I would, say an amigo say is down. I would say we're family. Oh, come wow. on. Now you got to get me a gift. Damn it! Fell <laughs> <laughs> so well, for it. Well, baited. Baited again. Actually, I got you something all the way from Japan. It's these cro- Nope, these are the pasta chips. These are pasta chips. You don't get the pasta chips. You get the crawfish chips. They're really gross. No. I don't do carbs. That's I fair. don't do crawfish. That's oh yeah, Snigger. Yeah, you don't do seafood. How about... JJ, fine. How about pasta? Do they taste like the Pizzalicious Pringles? You have to see for yourself. They probably don't. <laughs> they don't taste bad. I just don't know what they taste like. Uh, but anyway, Obviously folks, I'm Sammy Gonzalez, a.k.a. The Mexicans. Joining me on the other side, not eating food we have. Hey, my name is Marco. I'm drinking beer, though. Uh, hope everyone is doing well. Um, I should be drinking a pickle beer, but I guess I'll just drink two next week at this rate. I don't. So we'll get back to our regularly scheduled football programming, and Marcos will be the lead there. But JJ, on the other hand, is eating um, literally Japanese Lay's with minus 50% something and some red sauce logos on it. Italian red meat. Is that what that says? Yes. You know how to read Japanese a little bit? No. I know how to <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was. Uh, you could have just gone with it, JJ. Yes, you know how to read Japanese. Tina, you're part of the familia. I'll give you that. <laughs> no, she's distant cousin. She's right. She's right. Yeah, that's part of the familia. Oh yeah, part of the familia, but, but, but the right distance, you know, because you want to make sure you want to make sure that she's far enough away where she can still give us money and it's not weird. It so, does have like a mild be, beefy flavor. I mean, be, <laughs> JJ's still on the potato chips. I'm. Do you want them? I mean, that's exactly what my no. Okay, what my weird uncle would do. He would just give, show up, give me twenty bucks, and take off. Okay, so you are weird uncle Christina. There you go. <laughs> I strive um, to be weird uncle. Right, and we're seven days in, and nobody else has donated any gift subs. But Christina's at twelve, and there's been no cheers. Give the gift of excellence to everybody she's taking back to your lead. life. Oh, she's got the only lead. But. Donate to the Mexicans using uh, gift subs, using direct uh, direct donations. Uh, uh, Venmo me money, and, and it'll go to the account. I'm I'm Don't will do totally that do that. I will totally do that. Christina, I told her to just Venmo me money, and then I promised her I wouldn't steal it. And then I, I crossed my fingers when I did it though behind my back because I'm a fibber, as they would say. But we're not here to talk about donations, even though I love them. We're here to talk about Christmas. Are you guys in the Christmas spirit? Have you guys been watching holiday movies? Nah, bro, I'm still fucking... Uh, I'm caught up in a whirlwind of shit, really, honestly. Um, <laughs> Tell me how you really feel about life right now. No, no, it's not a bad thing. It's like last week I went to three concerts. Yeah. Um, so what did I do? I was at one of those. Hey, who was it? Uh, we were together at Jeff Rosenstock, and it was a, an amazing show. The other two shows that I went to, one was okay and the other one was bad. Um, and then I was, I was, one of the things that annoyed me about the show being uh, having to be whatever happened like within two hours before Mm -hmm. is there was a show i wanted to go to this tuesday that i didn't get tickets to oh because you had a show yeah and you're like fuck i could have gone and you know what man jeff rosenstock this is some good christmas music right here oh this is covid stuff Oh, I, was, I just picked a random song. I just was hoping. It actually was more Christmassy than I thought it was. I thought it was going to be like super heavy metal rock and stuff like that. No, dude, it was a ska concert. Oh. <laughs> well, it could be a very ska and Christmas. The opener, Small Crush, was a, like a city pop. Like, yeah, they were very good. Well, you yeah. know what's going to happen is that these these clips are inevitably going to get on TikTok, and we're going to put up something really brilliant, but half the comments are going to be like, oh my God, I love Small Crush. So welcome, Small Crush fans, to the Mexicans after you seek them out after the t shirt. Yeah. And people the, who like Star Wars already know our shitty takes. The on. lead singer, like she said, this was her first time in Texas, and the first thing that they ran to was to go buy breakfast tacos. 
Mm. And then she, I, I asked from the audience, did you get a bean and cheese? And she said, no, bacon, egg, and cheese. That's and like it, New York and wrong. I don't know. That, how is that wrong <laughs> and New York? Well, uh, it caused me and JJ to start talking like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Hey, get I my bacon, egg, and cheese. <laughs> I got my puffer in my Tim's. I need my bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah, bacon, egg, and cheese. Bacon, egg, and cheese. With the bed. With the bed. With the bed. We outside. We outside. <laughs> we outside. <laughs> It's so stupid, but it's such a fun thing. Go watch the movie, That folks. movie's going to fall on my top five, for sure. <laughs> That's right. Well, actually, I'm going to go do a double, Japanese double feature tomorrow, I think, Saturday. Are oh, you going to see The Boy and the Bird? I'm gonna, the boy, boy and the, the Heron, and then um, Godzilla. But I might have to sneak in Gojira Zero, because I think that's a prequel, right? No. Oh, they're not? Are they separate? God, so, it's, I think it's called Minus Zero One, and minus it's one. a prequel. Right. So I gotta see. Zero. I saw it and not and I understood everything. Well, but. I want to see the spooky, weird-eyed Godzilla, but that was not what we're talking about. That's not Christmas. We're gonna talk about Christmas and what I, and we did growing up. What? My friend, my friends, and my cousins definitely got a lot of Godzilla shit as when we were. <laughs> no, I was about to say, is Godzilla a, a reference to the baby Jesus or something? Is it rebirth? I've seen that too. Actually, <laughs> is it like a nuclear rebirth? Well, there's or something? a comic where he goes to hell. There's a comic where he plays Charles Barkley. I think, and Poor, yeah, no, like, yeah, he dunks on Charles Barkley, I believe. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Godzilla, we'll talk about Godzilla. Should we do a review for Godzilla? We can. Uh, we can do that, and the boy and the bird, and we do prequel for. Oh, we don't have time. Last tomorrow's my last week, and I don't know if we have time on Thursday. But oh, we can do it for Thursday. Next That's Thursday. That's what I said. There you go. Maybe we talk about Godzilla, but we're not talking about Godzilla right now. We're talking about the baby Jesus. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's coming up, and we needed to do. One of these shows. It's been a while since we've done Massive Mass Man with Many Connells. Actually, in the interim, because we had Chunkle Academy on, you've done a podcast with Chunkle Academy. Is that out yet? Yeah, uh, it's out. It's called Alas Chamberdies. And all it was was just San Antonio versus Austin, music and food. Uh, and did you represent Austin? I had to. That's did you win? No, it wasn't really a debate because Fuck. Uh, apparently. Chocolate Academy was just trying to bait people and being like, so Austin has good food too. And it's just like, well, yeah, it does. Like, it's not devoid of it. No. Oh. Was he disagreeing that Austin does not have good food? No, he just thinks that people kind of over glamorize San Antonio to a degree, which oh. is true. So, wait, he was degree. for San Antonio and then also was talking smack about San Antonio? There was oh, there's another cat there. There's yeah. Three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know there's another person, but be sure to go check that out to support our friends of the show. Uh, but more poorly, support us. Donate again. I'm sorry. But we are talking about Christmas and some of our traditions because the thing about Christmas traditions and like being Mexican is that there's such a spectrum between Mexican and like Mexican American, Chicano, third generation, fourth generation. So there's a lot of traditions that people are like, this is strictly Mexican. This is strictly American. There's all sorts of confusion. So what we're going to do on this episode is we're going to talk about our traditions, the things that we do. Get into them a little bit, just make sure we're clarifying like what it was like as a kid to go through Christmas. And then I want to go over like the Mexican traditions, like the the, the big ones, see if we hit them. Um, I mean, because there's a lot of them that people are like, you don't do this, you're not Mexican. It's like, oh, I didn't do that one, but I did like four others. I was about to say, like, I found out another nail that makes this show kind of hard to do. Because there's like, the, there's lack of research, there's no, I mean, not that we need to research like they, it's not as out there we can't as, just come up and show up here and yeah. be like all right so we're going to talk about mexican chicano uh veterans or something like that like for for the july out you assholes <laughs> <laughs> wait you don't know about chicano veterans god i know about a couple but uh, <laughs> you are a chicano veteran what are you talking about true. uh <laughs> i know what has been in the sense that it's just like uh the road has been so paved and uh african american topics are so prevalent and mexicans are just like it's fine i'm gonna go to work so it's <laughs> Jeez. i mean i mean yeah <laughs> well, well the antithesis of this podcast could also be like hey did you make tamales i made tamales hey but that also isn't like no I it's can't. real but it's been done yeah. and yeah that's part of the list because literally like i want to talk about how fucking hard the actual manual labor is to do it and in the context of being a dude doing it like uh, um intermittently as opposed to every year well here's the other branch that i was really going to talk to as fast as i can get to it hey, which fine. is um so there's what we did and what we grew up with and then it's just like oh cool i know a little bit about the cultural things right and then it's just because mexico has only existed for like 200 year 200 300 years right like and, proper right yeah like now I also have like random studies that come out by white people that are like, actually, poinsettias are bad. Wait, what do you mean poinsettias? For like for dogs? No, 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 not for dogs. Like 
the poinsettia was apparently like a really important flower to Aztecs. Like, yes. I actually asked Emiliano about it. Right. And the guy that changed the name and then made it part of Christmas was a slave owner and oh, did all that. God plot. damn it. <laughs> yeah, poinsettias are native yeah, to Mexico. They were like, um, they were using ritual and they were like uh, fertility purity. So they were like, fertility purity. Yo. Jesus, let's do this, right? Yeah, like I said, a white person taught me that today. Right. Uh, I read up about it. I did research for this topic because I was like, because I had white to. people have a really fucked up notion of Jesus. Cause <laughs> I don't think that dude fertile as fuck. <laughs> So what you're saying is Jesus fucked. You're saying Jesus fucked a lot is what you're implying here. I mean, this Jesus fucks a lot. Oh, fuck, for sure. <laughs> for sure. You I, you have poinsettias all over your house, I bet you. You fucking freak. No, freak don't. nasty in that way. Not like freak I bad. I bathe in them. Oh, oh, God. It's like rose water, only hotter. <laughs> <laughs> JJ's making point, poinsettia perfumes and tinctures to arouse women. We're not talking about. We're, let's keep it clean. Let's let's get into the dirty things and into the post-colonial colonialism of everything being colonial and everything being about white supremacy ruining everything. Because fuck, isn't it? Doesn't capitalism, white supremacy, ruin everything? I mean, but not Christmas memories. I'm like, I'm like yeah, it does <laughs> ruin Christmas things. Christmas memories. But the only uh, the the thing is, like, as three mestizos, the problem is we're half white. So, but like <laughs> further back, I'm not over here saying, oh, I'm Spaniard. When you mix a mestizo with another mestizo, you're still half white. <laughs> no, because like, look, I don't come around the here math being, do math, <laughs> right? I don't come out here talking about I'm six four, I'm Spaniard, and all this bullshit. Yeah, oh, I get no. my face is white. I get, it's a part That's of it. It's trying too fucking hard. It's if part you say of that it. you're Spaniard or yeah, yeah, but no, it's part of it. Being Mestizo, being I was actually my Oregon college at Miles and Neal's. Trust me, Spain don't claim you. What? Spain don't claim you. No, yeah, one hundred percent. Well, yeah, because I don't sound like fucking Sylvester when I speak Spanish. Oh, do you get a Taco Bell? He caído en un planeta muy extraño. Exactly. So fucking so Spanish Spaniards. Yeah, Spaniards don't want me. That's fine. You can have your fucking um, shrimp shrimp rice, you bastards. Uh, Spaniards don't want us. You'll get bullied by in Native American. Americans too, so it's just like we just gotta have each other. Sorry, I was, I was gonna say something real mean about Native Americans, even though it's in my blood. I was like, all five of them, they're gonna be mad at me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. Hey man, I saw Run Reservation Dogs and Killers of the Flower Moon. There's at least thirty. Okay, there's a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry. There's at least thirty, and they're all actors somehow. <laughs> so no, nah, I'm fucking with the Native Americans because I'm part of what. I, I'm not gonna come in here one saying that I am super Spaniard or that the other part, which is like. Oh, yeah, I have native in me. This nose doesn't just come from anywhere. But at the same time, I'm not going to say, like, oh, I'm fucking from Oaxaca. Eh? Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm fucking Fresno, dude. What? Maggie found that funny. I I, no, I don't think. The whitest person in this room thought that was funny. I was about to say, I don't think they go Oaxaca A. Eh. Oh. Like, that's the problem. <laughs> Christina, I feel so seen. Christina's about as white as a piece of paper. So she's like the ultimate, like, confused. Because, or not even confused, but just like, you know, I mean, can't she's claim. from your hood. She's like, not my of, hood. Not even from California. That's the closest hood. I'm just saying, like, if, if we look at the whole world, you're the same hood. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> California, my hood. It's like five states. North, northern, middle of California. I, don't I remember dare very one easily, one. Christina. I dare very easily. She says, I dare you. <laughs> but no, we're talking about Christmas and, and the traditions. And I'll start with mine because it's, it's, I feel like it would be kind of, um, Similar and different because I'm like third generation, fourth generation, depending on how you count it. My parents were born here like, let's see, three of my grandparents were born here. Actually, four of them were born here. One of them was born here on vacation. So she was a naturalized citizen, but then lived in Mexico for a bit and then came back. My grandma, she was born. Yeah, my great grandma was pregnant, came to visit in Arizona, had the baby in Arizona. Bam, touchdown. She got citizenship. So, but she was a resident <laughs> resident alien for the longest time. But the idea is I, I'm I'm further along the line. I'm I'm Mexican American. I was gonna make an anchor baby joke and then I held back and then you went touchdown and I'm like <laughs> Same. <"Kinda> worse. <laughs> <laughs> kinda wor kinda worse. <laughs> kinda worse. Not as direct. So there you go. A little a little more vague, a little more ethereal. Not not so hack, I guess you could say. But I, I will give you a little taste. You wanna know what the taste of my Christmases were? Technically we had three, okay? My for the longest time, like like you said, Marcos, times change. Our, our annual uh, the Christmas Eve party um, is no longer happening. My mom don't like cooking. 
Well, actually, no, it's not about my mom not, not liking cooking. And although it's tiring to cook for a bunch of people, her sisters, who we would have it from my mom's side, they're all too old. They're all in their 70s and stuff. Say that, they can't um, drive at night, so they can't the, do parties. The reason things change is just the head of the household changes. My grandpa was in charge of... Basically, every gathering when I was, like, a little pequeño. Right. Uh, then at some point, uh, my mom was in charge because my grandpa wasn't up to it like right. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I guess at some point soon, I, I got to take the reins in the next five, ten years. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And I, I don't have – I'm a millennial. I don't own a home. So, and I never will. So – um, and you go to the park like the, uh, the rest of my family. Just go to the park. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Rent a cabin. Rent a fucking cabin there, for There's Christmas. always a workaround for that. There's always. Well, there's not, not with the millennial budget. What? I'm not going to Maggie's house. I'm going to my own parent. My, well, here's the idea. So my mom, the the her siblings who would come over for um, the holidays for Christmas Eve, and all their kids, you know, her, you know, they're my cousins, and then sometimes my cousins' kids because of the age gaps. It was. A big giant party with everybody there. Now, the youngest babies, like when we were growing up, the ones that were younger than me, are now in high school and college. And I am the adults. And then there's the elderlies, which are now too elderly to camp drive at night. So that party's done. Like seeing all of my extended family on my mom's side for Christmas every year, done. We did that, though, the night before. Then we had Christmas morning, all of ourselves, just the family, the six of us. And then, if you guys want to peek into my life, we would go into my other grandma, my dad's mom. We'd go to her house, and then we'd have a Christmas with all the cousins. And that's where this picture comes from. So these are all my dad's cousins uh, on my dad's side. Uh, my siblings are in there, a couple other cousins. And there, if you can see my grandma in the middle, and this giant baby is me with the uncomfortable face. But yes, that's me as a baby with hair. I am adorable. But that's what the that's what it was. We all these kids would be in one tiny living room opening presents, and I just remember how humid it was with all that like little boy heat because there's so many little boys and little girls. The girls would be in the back. They would take the back area, and then all the the, the boys would just be in the middle, just opening gift cards and socks for my grandma. And I've come to realize the socks thing. How do you fucking get gifts for 12 different kids? Just open up a pack of socks, buy a, buy a five pack or a six pack. There you go. You get one. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. We all got a pair of socks. Grandma's taken care of. Siberia two pack. block. I do look like DJ Khaled. Buy a 12 pack and everyone just gets one sock. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, that does work as well. But, but there's. We're reading comments real quick. Yeah. Shout out to Rico Hero for stepping up this year. What? Oh. I felt that this year. Uh, his parents were so old, so him and his sister took care of Thanksgiving. Oh, see? I don't want to do that, so good on him. <laughs> no, I, it, we're getting to that point. I, don't, I might have to go start going to Northern California to well, do you Christmas. Have, you have older brothers that can... Oh, I got, yeah. I got, there's way, it's way more people ahead of me yeah. than before it gets to you me. You don't got to make the turkey. You just got to make, like, the ham now, maybe. Oh, no, I'm the baby brother. I don't have to make shit. It's great. Oh, I my would God. actually prefer it if I made most of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, see, I... I JJ's a bomb cook. I, I can say that now. So that's right. You guys live together now. You're making delicious treats all the time. I'm sure. No, I can't. I, I, if I'm going to be the little brother, and I don't get it, say on on major decisions, I find out things last, like somebody dying or people having surgeries. If I have to deal with all those things as an adult, I will then also use that I'm the baby card to not to not cook. Or to not pitch in for certain gifts or whatever and get to write my name on it. Okay? So there's a little bit of. it just has the baby from the dinosaurs. <laughs> not the mama. That's me. That, that's I'm my the baby. The God love me. Yeah. Yeah, that little baby did not look like that little baby from that show. Not the mama. Boom. So that was part of it. And then part of this adventure, though, you wanted to get outside of the fucking heat of all the children. So we would go play uh, Six Flags Up. We play football with all the boys right there. I was small, but I enjoyed it because I ended up being about the same size as everybody, even though I was younger by quite a bit. Um, and then at this house is where we really did a lot of the Christmassy things. Like my mom, my grandma would bring tamales, and then my mom has started making them because my grandma's old. And so this house, though, my grandma would make pozole and tamales, and I would eat so much of them till it hurt, and I love it. And then my grandma passed away, and now it's my cousin who's uh, pictured here, co-founder of the Mexlins, 
the fantabulous Gergi. He I makes it. He looked now. familiar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you've seen he's that the guy one that before. Was here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've seen this guy. I I don't know if you miss my brother, but there's my brother right there, who looks like just like a Your slightly looks diff- like the most normal Mexican child. Yeah, no he's to the rest of y'all, but like. I have like three pictures of me in that <laughs> with that exact expression on my face. <laughs> Just that exact starter jacket too. No, no right. shit, right? Uh, starter, you got starter jackets. You got Forty Nine er uh, Raiders jacket sweaters. I'm pretty sure mine had like the Texas Rangers instead of the Rangers. <laughs> and then you have the sweet '90s hair in the back from one of my relatives there. So um, no, so that was like the the tradition was was Christmas Eve. Mom's party with all those siblings. Most of them were girls, so that one was just like I'd just eat cookies and shit because my sister would make them. And then Christmas morning, open the presents like the movies. Um, wow. Oh, by the way, I forgot this wrinkle. Uh, while the Christmas story was playing, 24 hour Christmas story, every time. My mom hates that movie by now, but I, I, I have to have it on in the background for those 24 hours. That became a tradition at, at my house. You did, was- yeah, did it? Oh. <laughs> How, how recently? Because it's been going on since I, like, even before I was born, probably. I don't know when. Wait, when did that movie come out? It came it's out like in, 80s, like, the 80s. Yeah. Maybe 87, I want to say. 83. Um, okay. Well, Jesus Christ. I but don't yes. know how long TVS has been running it, or TNT has been running it for 24 hours. At the very least since my childhood, because it, it's my earliest memory has it, so. But yeah, I know, I think. Somewhere around like fifth or sixth grade, it became a tradition at my house because Uh that was when I got to my English and Spanish competency was to the point where I could translate the movie fast enough to understand it. Yeah. to, To my parents. Oh, to your parents. Like I understand. How do you explain a leg lamp in Spanish? I, oh, you don't have to explain that. Part. My dad and my mom got that. Part. <laughs> okay, fair enough. There's there is what do they call it? A uh, visual sex <laughs> in the window. Right. Yeah, but like I knew how to say fragile in Spanish. <laughs> Fragil. <laughs> uh, Fragil. Uh, oh man. But yeah, and then. They, to this day, my mom gets a kick out of like the the Chinese restaurant. Oh God damn it! When yep. they're singing, "Tis the season to be jarry." <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't hold up quite as much. It doesn't hold up, but quite as I well. still laugh because I'm a bastard. But the part that like kills her without fail is when they s- chop the head off the duck. Oh, that's right, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> She's like, oh, they're not used to seeing that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're not used to seeing that. That's right. Hold on. Just, JJ, I, I kind of got curious. Um, they have a Christmas story in Spanish on YouTube. I, I, I didn't know they had it in Spanish. I've never heard it in Spanish. Let's see what it sounds like. Let's do the bumpuses when they, when they steal the turkey. Let's see the dad yelling. <laughs> We're going to get copyright stricken as long as I keep talking. I should be okay. I need to skip ahead a little bit, though. (laughs) Oh, I hope the dad is Goku. (laughs) We'll edit it out later. It's not. That's a a super mate. (laughs) Senor (laughs) Raro. Says. No, it doesn't have quite the same, but that was JJ doing the whole movie in Spanish. <laughs> I'm kidding. But no, um, that was a huge one to just kind of round mine out. Um, but one more, uh, if we're talking about traditions and things of that sort, um, once again, if I haven't remembered this, you brought up the Cheech earlier in the pre-show. Um, the reason why I'm a fan of Cheech is because that was one of the only comedy CVs my dad let me listen to growing up because he... Straight, yeah, I know. My, for my dad who didn't let me watch Bart Simpson. But yeah, you, you could watch Cheech making dick jokes. <laughs> was listening. It was listening to <laughs> that it. That doesn't make it better. I don't know if it does, <laughs> but that was the thing. He was like, no to Bart Simpson, no to SpongeBob SquarePants, but Cheech and Chong's greatest hit, the album, you can just listen to on a loop, which I did. And when the advent of the internet came out, I was looking up the other tracks and the other clips and whatnot, and then I happened upon a song slash story. About Santa Claus and his old lady. Have you heard this? I mean, there's, I've heard a lot of songs about Santa Claus. With Cheech and Chong? Yes, actually. There you go. JJ, have you heard this at all? 
probably. Oh, I see. Well, hey, man, sit back and relax, and I'll tell you the story <laughs> about Santa Claus, man. Listen, once upon a time, about mm, five, five years, years ago, ago. <laughs> there was this groovy dude, and his name was Santa Claus, you know? And he used to live over in the projects with his old lady. And they had a pretty good thing together because this old lady was really fine and, and she could cook and all that stuff like that. You know, like she made the best brownies in town, man. Oh, I could remember them now, man. I could eat one of them, man. Wow, oh, wow. did you know these people, man? Oh, yeah, man. They used to live next door to me, you know, until they got kicked out, man. Oh, I think I kicked out of the projects, man. <laughs> you know what happened, man? They used to live with all these midgets, you know. And the midgets used to make a lot of noise, you know, like pounding and banging and pounding all night, man. Wow. Typical freaks. Oh, yeah, man. They were really freaks, yeah. man. <laughs> so it's the story of Santa Claus and his old lady. I completely forgot this. Oh, my God. Yeah, Christina, go back and watch it. It's on YouTube. It's everywhere. Santa Claus and his old lady staple. Have to listen to it. Have to love it. But, like, that's how it would go. And the thing is, like, Marcos, you kind of made me sad because you're like, you know, you get older and then these traditions don't last just because people get older and, and well, priority, yeah, the only, you priorities the, change. You're the person that needs to keep them alive to some degree. God damn it. I'm the Christmas magic now? Is this the moral of our Christmas At story here? At some point, yeah. I, I don't know if it's exactly you because, like I said, you have older brothers. I don't know what you're complaining sisters. about, bro. Like, everything in our media told us the magic is in you. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the magic was the presence, and it's a, we're in a recession right now, man. We just remember the wise old Captain Planet. The by power no metric, is yours. <laughs> by no metric are we. That was for pollution. By the way, by no metric are we in a recession. Like Joe Biden is actually doing a really good job on the economy. Thanks, Joe. And nobody wants to talk about it because <laughs> <laughs> because it's not popular because he's all elderly. But yeah, all of a sudden, when an elderly man gives you a gift of less student loans, you want to get mad at him. But if an elderly man comes down drunk as shit into your chimney. To give you... Why do you have to be drunk? But that's what jolly means. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Jolly, the original uh, the original translation of jolly was jolly rosy-cheeked red, and it inherently just meant sloppy drunk, which is pretty oh, I hilarious. I thought that just was like, anybody that goes out in the cold gets kind yeah. of... Oh, no, yeah. jolly was... No, no, Santa Claus was blitz, dude. He was blitz going into all those chimneys, but that's the thing. If the magic was on that sweet, sweet hair on. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, hex, hex. Breaking into houses, trying to find his next hit. <laughs> you got the juice now, Sammy. I don't want the juice. As I said, baby brother, I have that in my soul. I don't want to be, because then it means that the magic's over for me. Because I have to be the magic. And I want the, I, I, I still that. want magic given to me, all right? My life's too damn hard sometimes for me to have to make the magic too. You got a great podcast, a great job, and a great girlfriend. I don't know how it could be any better. In times of strife, I remember the wise words of Shaka Khan. I am every woman. <laughs> it's all <in> me. <laughs> Everything you want now, baby. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just not feeling the Christmas cheer. Well, maybe Marcos. Maybe you can. You could. You can regale. Regale might be the wrong word. The stories of your childhood. Christmas adventures. Was it the tales of the glories of Christmases long, long ago? There were I mean, many a jolly uncle. Okay, John, plenty of jolly uncles. You were, you might have been some of those. I could be the jolly uncle. I, okay, if my festivities, if by the magic is in me, I can be the jolly uncle. Done. Um, <laughs> I was going to start off with, like, so if you your story starts off with you being third or fourth generation, I'm one. No. I think JJ's one, too. So it has to start off with, like, our grandparents pretending to be as American as they can be as fuck. So they tried. Yeah, but they poorly tried. Like, really. Like. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the deal is with these red socks, but I guess we better get the kid one. <laughs> <laughs> they were just red tube socks. I mean, definitely by the time I was, like, a child with memories, like, yeah, that didn't happen. But there is stories out there of my grandpa putting on socks, and it's just like, I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but, like, what was the format of, like, your Christmases? So they're trying to do it. So they're doing the socks. Are are you doing, so actually, you know. actually, we never got stockings, ever. Like, ever. I never saw stockings until, like, I dated, like, my first white girlfriend in high school. <laughs> so um, the whole idea of, like, the cute thing, like, you get a stocking with your name on it, never saw Never that. in school? They never made you do that in school? Like, no. paper craft? No, dude. Our nah. school didn't have money. <laughs> For paper? <laughs> 
Oh, I thought you meant like the cloth ones. No, 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 no. What you would do is you cut them out with the construction paper and then staple the edges and then you get white paper and you staple the top. So and I then you fill it with oranges. Yeah, we would we would do that, but we didn't know why. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, why are we doing these turkeys with our hands? Why are we doing these? See, the turkey one makes sense. Like, oh, at the end of the month, I ate one. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody makes gave you red socks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then it's just kind of like... Um, I mean, we did get presents and all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did do, like, the list to Santa. But it was just kind of like with my grandpa in charge of everything. Because I remember his being kind of the best. And it comes down to food, the same thing that you brought up Mm -hmm. earlier. But um, he'd actually start, like, the morning before, like, Christmas Eve. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's because, like, from years one to five, when my grandpa was at his healthiest and I existed, like, we Coexisted, yeah. yeah. Um, He would make barbacoa. Oh my oh, god! You did the hole. Yeah, he did. Yeah, no, yeah. He did the hole. We already yeah. had the t- the hole in the back, and but he'd unfold the lamina, and then yeah. he'd get everything ready to do, um, to do the uh, to do the barbacoa like that. Or no, no, no that's a grave. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, no, I know what that looks. I know what the barbacoa that's, hole that's looks the like. Small um, hole that the hamster would dig out of. <laughs> <laughs> this hole. No, 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 it wasn't that nice. No, because we had no, yeah, cause, no, <laughs> no, because my cousin, my cousin would make food like that. It's like a shallow, kind of angular, and then you put oh, some stuff on it. Oh, it was shallow. It was like four feet. Oh no, shit. Yeah, oh, fuck. Yeah, it's in there. I'll find. I'll find the proper barbacoa <laughs> hole. There we go. How about this? That's a little closer. closer, but it's it's like I said, it was a little bit deeper, and then also because it was just in America, like it it was covered with with like aluminum mm-hmm. uh, foil aluminum siding oh god oh yeah <laughs> yep yep we, the proper leaves don't that's grow here. right yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> oh man that sounds so good dude um and then we would wake up i mean i never really helped them i was too much of a uh, of a kid because like i said it was one through five but i mean i we'd all start gathering uh most of our family was there like you said when my grandpa was healthy, it would be three or four branches of the family. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, we host any kind of Christmas thing. It's one family, like mm. just my immediate family at this point. Right. But, I mean, I do understand how it's a hassle because my mom is the smallest of the family. So, In terms of br- family number, not just height. No, uh, the youngest. <laughs> youngest. Okay, got you. So my mom's family is six. Like, okay. for her whole thing. Yeah. Everybody else is, like, if you count the oldest one, they have grandkids already. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. <laughs> Jeez. So, we so they have be, life already. They have other yeah. life. They're the grandparents yeah, at their it parties. It would be impossible to get all 90 of us together in one place. Golly. But um, then, I mean, at a certain point, it would just be like they would start a bonfire. Um they started actually a couple bonfires now that I think about it because one would be for tripas, one would be for warmth, and then one would be for, I don't know, the, the sad uncle to tell his sad <laughs> uncle stories. <laughs> I could also do that too. <laughs> I have lots of those as well. <laughs> um, and then at a certain point, everyone would get kind of drunk um, of, 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 of age and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like I never actually even did – my dad actually never did the, um, like, just drink it, it'll be fine thing. Yeah, no, no. We... My dad never did that, but I did accidentally drink his Sprite once. Yeah. <laughs> Though we, we were baited into a, uh, um, goddamn brandy and Cokes. Sprite. Brandy and Cokes. <laughs> my mom would just leave full Cokes of brand, full of brandy inside. Not Maybe not filled, but mixed with brandy. The funny thing is, I don't know about you, but for us... The brandy that we would, my mom would always get was a presidente. Presidente? Yeah. <laughs> no, so, no, um, I realized that my mom had the hood one. My mom was good with E and J. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she, I don't know if that's high class or whatever, but I was like, yeah, my mom, my mom fucked with E and J for the longest time. That's not it. Where's the old one? There you go. Yeah. Well, presidente is only, or at least was. I haven't not actually seen that bottle because I stopped, like I said, I stopped bootlegging. But, uh, <laughs> there you, there's the way, the fat one or the long one? That one. Uh, that bottle used to be 10 that, bucks. Yeah. Nice. Look My that. parents had one of the fat ones, but it was from like a wedding that was like. <gasps> oh, what, that's right. Weddings used to put it in the middle part yeah. of the. Oh, the centerpiece? Yeah, centerpiece. part of the centerpiece. They're like, people are going to steal it no way. It's like. It's the theirs. brandy. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well put, make it worth their while. You can put flowers in it. I can see it already once it's done. No, well, there was flowers around it. The bottle was full. No, it but I'm saying when you empty the, the, the bottle, that's a nice vase right there. But 
So um, you got barbacoa, you got sad fires, you got food fires. And then, like, I remember, like, some of my aunts were tricksters. And, what? <laughs> yeah. So they would throw fireworks in the fire. Jesus oh, Christ! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had many an uncle mad at us for doing that. <laughs> and now, is that a, now, now, do you think, is that a Mexican thing or is that a your family thing? I mean, if you well, did, it. I did it. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so adding uh, to my, because we're gonna we're gonna try to hash out some of the more Mexican traditions, or 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 maybe even add some to our list after in the break. But I mean, this one, fireworks into bonfires. This might be a straight up the Hano thing, and I just mean maybe. it in the sense that I know that they probably do do it in places like where, if there's a collective of Mexicans in North Carolina, I'm sure they do it too. But it comes down to when fireworks are legal and when you can buy them in Texas, for some fucking reason, you can buy them before Christmas up uh, to so new the, year's. So that was a question I had California. They're illegal. Uh, uh, only up until July 4th, that for the window you have in Texas, they aren't legal. But there's more open windows for purchasing them. Is there's that correct? Two windows. There's December, probably like fifteenth. Okay. January first. Right. And then Fourth um, of July. Fourth of July. So they're technically illegal all other times. Technically yes. illegal all I other mean, times. Technically, they're also illegal now because you have to be outside of city limits. But as you've known, uh, nobody gives a fuck about uh, that. Right. Well, ours is because of wildfires. You could burn down the whole state <laughs> with an errant firework. So. I feel like with global warming, that's probably everywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wildfires came to Texas. It's not going to be a fun time for you guys when you realize that shit's dry. The stronger fireworks that are legal year-round around here. Yeah, well, that's the other <laughs> thing, too. You're right. That's the other thing, too. So... So fireworks, you're, yeah, you're, I, so I, they I, would do that. So the guys would be drinking. I'm assuming the guys are drinking around the fire. The guys would just be like, fireworks. Yes. Fucking shit, dude. And I've also <laughs> never understood, like, because this is strictly something only Mexicans do. Like, it's not, or at least Mexicans in Texas. Like, they treat Christmas Eve to Christmas, like, to midnight. Uh-huh. People would stay up to midnight. Yeah. Right. And they would treat it like New Year's. When it was, you would count down, and then when it's midnight, right. you would pop a shitload of fireworks. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, we want to. I want to pause on that thought. Keep it with fireworks, because I have a question for part two on that. But, yes, New Year's fireworks. Fireworks are... Have been have been a part of your yearly Christmas traditions. Then, yeah, I was trying to see if anybody has thrown fireworks in a bonfire. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> no, that ain't it. Chief. That's separate. No, that was <laughs> that. Who was this? Simply V seven nine seven four. Whack shit. Got to do better. It's got. You got to throw it in. Um, you got to throw like a jumping jack in the middle of a bonfire. John, what's a jumping jack? Oh, it's the one that spins around. Oh, the. <laughs> Yeah, but it looks know. like a black cat. So. Ah, <laughs> so, well, are there any other traditions in your the yearly traditions that you'd have as a kid that was like kind of building the lore of your memory of Christmas? Well, we didn't have things because there were such big age gaps. We didn't do sports because, yeah. like, yeah, because was there like just chunks of kids that were older and like now are not enough? Because like yeah, our enough. our gap was. My brother's the oldest, and he's six years older than me. And then the other ones are, let's say, every two years or so, there was a new kid. So, so. me, Paco, and Danny are about the same age. Paco is like maybe two years older than me. And uh-huh. Then the next one up would be Issa, Danny's sister, and she's like the same age as Paco. Right. And then between Issa has two brothers. Issa and Danny have two brothers. And I always remember them being, like, fucking high schoolers when I was five. Right, right. Well, t- I mean, to be fair, I was the youngest. Everybody seemed like they were high schoolers at a certain point. All the girls did, because all the girls were the oldest, so. Uh, I would say one of the big things that we did, and I, I don't know how regional this is, because I have talked to um, another podcaster, Adrian, about it. Uh-huh. That Chicago does it, but I, I don't think California does. Which one? Matachinas? Oh, yeah. Which Matachinas. one's that? So when I, you, I, I can't remember in California. They could do it. It's a big state. Um, so when you were bringing up Prisha, Lady uh, El Virgen de Guadalupe, um, so this is like a mixture that if we had Emiliano, he could probably give us a lot of lore about it. But it's a mixture of a. Um, it's of like a, native, a per, yeah. It's uh, a native thing and like a. It's more popular in like Peru, ah. from what I could gather. 
uh i've only done very minimal research on it just because i was like where the fuck are they like i thought, <laughs> I thought this was a uh, uh every mexican thing and like no <laughs> Uh, well, I put Los Angeles, so it looks like there's still some there. So they definitely do it in in California. But I know I I if it was there, I didn't recognize it. Yeah, because there's like indigenous headdresses, but then there's a Christian cross on the top. Yeah, and the they're, they're the they're Virgin on the, the street for the Virgin. Yeah, and, and it's also weird and also kind of like why I have a demon tattoo is they literally have demons as part of the Matachinas that it's just like I'm gonna dress up as a demon to scare all the demons. On I the want street. it to be the monster. Ah, so, it's up, our very own Krampus lore. Yes. Yeah. Growing up, here. my grandma would help out with that. My grandma was always like super religious and she was very involved with the church. And mm -hmm. and even like with my school, like when I went to kinder and everything, she was very, I still have teachers from kinder that ask me like, how's your grandma doing? <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I never actually got to be a matachin i wanted to but uh i i don't know why my parents were just like no right i guess yeah <laughs> i think it was just like the schedule wouldn't line up with what i had to because i was also like in band when i was old enough right and both my parents had to work a lot of the time mm -hmm. so i never did it but that was one of the big things that we would do during christmas is that uh when I was really small, my parents would just take me to Mexico. They would take me to Piedras, mm -hmm. which was, you know, just a hop, skip, and a jump away. Right. And we would watch the big, like, Matachines Festival or parade, I guess. Well, it's the, it's, we had local ones, but, and they would always practice, like, close to my house. So right. we would see them. Yeah. But, like, the actual, like, night of the big, night of the virgen de guadalupe yeah the actual day of they're like no we're going to be at us you're going to see the pros do it right yeah well here's one in uh, monterrey there's one right there so yeah no they're out <laughs> come to the pros we got for these amateurs right here trying their hardest for america we're gonna go to the real ones over well, there yeah and then like have you ever seen no country for old men i've not but that's your whole hometown right like the there's a if you look up like the scene in front of the church when he gets Sung at by I mean, if you mariachis. Just type in Piedras Negras Church, like it'll be the only image yeah. that pops up. They would perform right in front of that like beautiful old style Spanish church, and then back then that mm -hmm. street was not it was as still cobbled. I think it was Jesus Christ. Yeah, the plaza was super nice. I hate what they did to it. Although now there's a Chapulín Colorado there. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that, that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Damn, that yeah, that's way better. Yeah, and uh, so we Wait, would, see, that's where I had my quinceanera. There you go, Maggie had her quinceanera right there at this luxurious church. And yeah, we would just go like because it was right there. It's right in front of the first bridge. Right. So like, as soon as you cross the bridge, it's right there. I don't know what year that picture is, but they've modernized the entire plaza. It's well, there's not, no cobblestones there, so it yeah. must be a little more modern. <laughs> but, like, back then, that street wasn't super busy, and it was really, like, people would just fill the street. Right, yeah. And you could see the Matachinas perform from, like, one end of the block to the other. That's super cool, dude. Yeah. That's, I, I mean, here's the thing. That's, like, a huge gap in my thing. Actually, I, that kind of rounds out your kind of traditions, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the only other thing that we're missing is for some reason that I know it's very weird to a lot of people up north is that uh, we'd open presents at midnight. Yeah, you do open presents at midnight. Well, that was the, we'll get to that. Like I said, yeah. we'll we'll talk about that in a second. But JJ, the Matachinas, you saw them. That's part of your tradition. What are some of the other parts of your childhood Christmas traditions that we want to know about? A lot of it's just retreading what Mark already mentioned. Uh, we would always do fireworks. Uh huh. Um, the one thing that like sort of led to my family losing the magic per se is that uh -huh. since we were already so many, like I mentioned, Danny and Isa had 12 siblings. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Damn. How do you, uh, I mean, I thought the sixth that Paco, my cousin has. Paco is the only, only child in our entire extended family. That explains a lot. <laughs> that explains so much about our friend Paco who's been on the show. So... Uh, there was kind of a, a rule set amongst the elders mm -hmm. where it was like, once the kid is 18, 
just cut off. No more Christmas? No more Christmas presents. Like, ah. We'll still get, like, all right. Robert's, no, Junior's 18. Right. Robert's still 17. Robert gets one more year of presents. That is, I mean, look at, like, that but, is just efficiency at that point. Because, look, you can't, like, as I said, I thought this was a lot of children. But having to be like, okay, you said 12 others, so 14 total they, for that one family? N- or is it 12 total or 14 I'm total? I'm exaggerating. Okay. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That could but be they accurate. they are like six. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's a lot of kids. And then, like, that's just the one family. Right. Because Paco's the only, only <laughs> child. Right. We're just a lot. Right. You yeah, know, I mean, like, see, my family was, we were four. And that's just my dad's side. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> my dad's side alone. It was four, four, two, one. That was my dad's side. So four, four, two, one. Was that eight, nine, 13, 14, something like 13, something like that? Mm-hmm. That's just one side. So it's like, I get it. But other, th- so I guess then uh, to get more specific, Christmas barbacoa, what was your favorite food though or treat during Christmas? So, oh, that wasn't my favorite. We made gardening that night. No. <laughs> <laughs> we would always have barbacoa is for Christmas Day. Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the morning of <laughs> barbacoa. Uh, we would always make a carne. Uh, one of the things my grandma would always make for New Year's, she would make buñuelos, Ooh. but for Christmas, forgot about that one. For Christmas, she would always make ojarascas. Ojarascas, which are like Mexican wedding cookies. Oh shit! That's the real <laughs> name of them. I was literally looking it up right now. These ones? Uh, no. Nah. Damn it! Which ones are these? Let's see. The, oh, the, those. Those, those are it. The, <laughs> The cinnamon ones. Oh, okay. Because yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, same yeah. shit that goes on Muñuelos. It's just now it's a shortbread cookie. Oh, my God, <laughs> dude. Oh, I want some of these, dude. I want some of these. Well, no, because the Mexican wedding cookies, when they come up like that, they're the white ones. Yeah, they're That's the what my ones. sister makes. That was like that was the yearly thing where like, oh, baby, I'm going to get some <laughs> of these. Uh, I'm going to get powdered sugar all over my chest. It's going to be great. No, but yeah. The... Oh, those look good, though, dude. I'm like, I'm like I don't even Should know what these are, but I want always make ojarascas. I want them. Uh, they're amazing. So. Sure. I, so, 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 do you, you like different... shortbread cookies? Fuck yeah, I do. Do you like churros? Hell yeah, I do. You're all about these. These are the <laughs> best of both worlds. Fuck you, sticker doodles. <laughs> Fuck you, sticker doodles. I'm with ojarascas. Ojarascas. Got it right, baby. There you go. Because because I gotta find the nearest bakery and be like seven ojarascas. <laughs> Bro, they, every there's, there's totally a bakery by our house that sells it. It's off William Cannon. Oh, fucking give me uh, some. Uh, me tradition? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't tease me with this, JJ. I need I'm, them. I'm I need them in my home. veins. I'm going home for Christmas. I'll bring you back some mojarascas. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Me <laughs> Not bad, though. <laughs> I've had some conchas from there. Look, I am not a sweets guy, but Christmas is the one time where because there's trays. My sister makes trays of cookies. I'm just like, I'll just have one. So, I, I've talked about this exactly. with my brother that I was like, you know, grandma's not going to be around for much longer. Oh, no. And we both are capable with like a video camera. <sighs> we should just have her make us food and record it so that it's not lost to time. No shit, dude. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how often I miss my grandma's tortillas. But the one thing <sighs> that my mom did learn from my grandma. Mm-hmm. And has gotten it like spot on every mm-hmm. time is ojarascas. God, so damn. we're not losing those. We're not losing those. <laughs> and you got to imagine that recipe is at least seventy years old. Yeah, like as old as your grandma, maybe, and the addition of your mom and everything like that. Like that recipe was ideally from somewhere, at least one generation before. That's still old as shit. Even if it was Probably. like an old Betty Crocker, you know, like have you ever noticed that? Like you're like, oh, I have this family recipe, and it's like a Betty Crocker one from like 1923. It's hilarious. Have you ever seen a <laughs> recipe from 1923? They're hilarious. There's actually a, a, a TikToker who does those. Who finds old cookbooks and then he redoes? He oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about them. to say like he can make them because they're honestly old recipes are shitty as fuck. It's like uh, well, yeah, we'll it's have like, this gelatin. You, you, no, no, because there's no measurements. It's like you get some milk and you make some flour and then like 
blah 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 blah. No no heat either. There's oh, that's no, right. Yeah, there's no like heat to 375. It's just like, throw it in the oven and like pray. <laughs> <laughs> so like no, both it's, it's, literally it's, and figuratively. <laughs> oh shit! I gotta I gotta prove I'm not a robot. No, this guy right here. Cream from 1947. Yeah. This is fascinating because it seems chronologically wrong to find this in a 1940s cookbook, which means it must be pretty special, or that time traveling keto athleisure influencers exist. You know, people who follow strange concepts like exercise. Into a saucepan goes a half cup of sugar. A so they have two cups of milk. That was 1947. Oh, fine. Well, <laughs> fine. Let's find some hard tag. Oh, let's see. Let's well, see. If, here, go ahead. The go ahead. best example of what you're talking about: a pound cake is a pound cake because that was the measurement of the ingredients. Oh my god, oh yeah. It was let's, a pound of sugar, a pound of flour. <laughs> <laughs> let's see here. I'm just, I'm just trying to find like a, a 1920s recipe. Let's see, how about, fine, JJ. Pretty Duchess potatoes. <laughs> this is from apparently 19 the 1920s. Fuck, there's ingredients. I want authentic. I, you know what, your, your, your premise is correct. I just want to prove you right. Because you need oh, a yeah, jigger you, of potatoes. You're and have to go to my... Um, my grandma's house and find that red and white cookbook. Yeah. <laughs> every every Hispanic house I know has that damn cookbook. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it the one with like the um like the old school note paper like holes in it? Uh, yeah. Like, like with yeah, that binding, yeah, that plastic yeah, binding. Yeah, yeah. It's a plastic uh, binding. Yeah. yeah. Water cake for Sammy? No. <laughs> the ancestors had the flavor, as this TJ would say. No. See, I was thinking 1940s, like everything's gelatin, like that. Oh yeah, that was a big trend. Like, you want Jello ham? Ooh. No. <laughs> Ooh, let's see if I can read some of these. I have jello. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just weenies inside of a clear gelatin. Uh, here's orange cupcakes. So there's still some ingredients. One cup sugar, one cup. They weren't complete plebes in in 1920s. They still had some, but um, but that's assuming you had printing paper. You know, 1920s is also the Great Depression. I mean, so. it was actually they did like. I do know a little bit about newspapers at the time. You would see menus in the or uh, recipes in the thing, like oh, this strawberry recipe at the time of the week. <laughs> Let's see. Oh man, but that's what half of our books look like, though. Real yeah. old printing, some notes on the side to convert things over. Um, but no, that's the thing. All these Christmas recipes could be lost to time. I know there's certain things that I don't want lost to time. But like I said, my grandma's tamales, tamales. I'm sorry, tortillas like paper thin. I don't know. How do you make a tortilla that thin? That's still a physical piece of thing that could hold something down. <laughs> like, That's what I'm Bob's saying. Does it. Huh? Cabo Bob's does it. They have, <laughs> they're on right now. They're, no, they're pretty good. They have the advantage yeah. of technology. Like, if I had their fucking tortilla press, then... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like, All no. of mine would come out like that, too. But <laughs> yeah, but old lady hands somehow are able to make it almost translucent, I but still strong enough to hold beans. I can't dough to... To behave like every time I roll it out, it's like, nah, I'm coming back. Fuck you, gluten. <laughs> tortilla. I'm gonna look up thin tortillas just to see if I can find ones that were at. See, like all of these, too thick. Dude, that's too not even thick. thin. Here we, here we go. Now this is what we're talking about, baby. It's too big, but yeah, translucent tortillas. I'm like, oh my god, I miss them, Grandma. Miss you. Any other holiday? Actually, it was this Grandma. Actually, it was the <laughs> Grandma. I miss you. You're right there. Any other traditions, JJ, that you missed out on? I did forget about one. Yeah. Because we talked about fireworks for so long. And <laughs> this isn't a Christmas one, but it ended up happening every year in December. Hmm. From the time that we were 14 to the time that we were 21, we had a firework war every year in December. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. Okay. Oh. But that was more of an us thing. But that sounds so much fun. No, we played football. No, we played football. You guys had fireworks wars. Well, it only happened from 14 to 21. Like, it was... Yeah. But it was a teenager travieso thing. That I, yeah, but still, we so, were all too clean cut to do that kind of shenanigans, you the, know? The closest my family came to that is that since we would pop fireworks, uh, like, you know, even the adults would pop fireworks. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but, you know, inevitably, there's that one dud firework that, oh, like, no. it doesn't pop. Right. Or it, like, the... Fuse doesn't work. The fuse doesn't work. You know, <laughs> for whatever reason... It's not poppable by normal means. Right. So we would do brujerias, oh my which God. means we would just like break that fucker apart, get the gunpowder and, <laughs> <laughs> and just light the and fire just, like, at it. Make a joint out of it and be like, <laughs> let's pray. <laughs> we let's you... pray we keep all our fingers. <laughs> See that? Yeah. I don't, uh -oh. Bat G, ask away. <laughs> 
my white wife has a question. Well, ask that question while we look at these Mexican fire. I look at Mexican fireworks, and this is cow contraption. Don't know oh, what this is. Not, they did, Mexico does a running on the bulls. That's actually what I want to go to in March. Oh, is that the one with all the fireworks and the eyes and everything? I, I assume it goes in the eyes. This is just your Christmas. It's just this. Oh, we've already told you about the Palomas, right? Yeah, you did. We'll, we'll reiterate because I want to. I want to hear those <laughs> stories say, again. Like, made a TikTok about Damn. that one. <laughs> oh, these seem kind of shitty. There we go. <laughs> so you're saying like these ones would be thrown in a bonfire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they see some bottle rockets in there. You can tell by the sound. The jumping jacks are on the on the floor. Uh, <laughs> is fire a theme? Yes. Is, uh, is fire yes. a theme? Oh, actually, <laughs> yeah, let's actually be, uh, highlight that. Is fire a theme? I'll let you guys answer because I actually forgot a huge one of mine. Go ahead. Well, it used to get cold here. <laughs> <laughs> Global warming ruins Christmas. Um, yes, because like even if it wasn't cold, we would still like cook out right so there would still be a fire of sorts even if it was just like to grill on right uh fire would still be involved yeah <laughs> but like go ahead marcos did you have an addition to that no i'm just reading ricardo oh, <laughs> ricardo's that theme it's an experience it's a way of life, it's a way of life. <laughs> sidebar question is a love of fire inherently mexican or is it just us Cause I love fire. I love bonfires. I've had some white dudes that love fire, but I don't. I, I as far as I know, like I've never heard TJ or Tommy be like, "Right, let's have a bonfire." And they were weird that I was playing with the fire at that bar in yeah. in Austin. I was like, "Oh, this bonfire sucks. Where's your wood?" <laughs> <laughs> I was peeling branches off the side of the tree. But um, no, because you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you're doing it, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, "You shouldn't be touching that." I'm like, "You need to make your fire better." And so no, um, because that was a cold. Like New Year's Eve, that was only like three years ago. The last year before COVID, the last New yeah. Year's before COVID, the last fun one, the last song oh, before, before these got was real a super sad. Fun one too, <laughs> oh, that Christmas, oh, that holiday season. Yeah, yeah. No, I think because I went super late. Hold on, I have one picture um, that Rated is descendants of the sun god. I like that. <laughs> We are, maybe, maybe we are descendants of a sun god. I'm trying to find the picture because I actually, it's I actually mean, one of my cherished, most cherished pictures because I was talking outside about. Outside of Christianity, ahead. like, most people worship the sun. Like, I'm okay with, like, you don't have to be Aztec to actually probably, yeah, dude, that, that keeps me alive. It's the, it's, <laughs> it's the closest thing that we have to a god, like the sun. I like when that thing is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, when the, it's gone, I get scared and the wolves come out. <laughs> <laughs> People who worship the sun are literally worshiping a god. You can't look them directly into the eye. You definitely it gives life, like you said, photosynthesis. If you stand too much in its presence, it will burn you on a molecular level. The sun is a god, right? It's, it's a it's a Lovecraftian horror. It floats in space, and when you when he leaves, things become unsafe and scary. And our instinct is to hide in a cave because we're not in the presence of the god. And create a cheap imitation of them. <laughs> right. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> the fireworks. <laughs> we have our God. We have God in our pocket. I have the power of God. Right. I've got an anime on my side. Ah! Why does everyone stay up to midnight? Because that's when Santa came. <laughs> that was a shitty. We had to jump him to get our presents. Right. We were all on the. <laughs> we were all on the other list. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, we, you guys are talking about the palomas and how you guys would execute these. Let's go. Oh, I'll have you read the stories in a moment, but I just want to remind people what the palomas were. It's just gunpowder and newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> guys, like, I, I can't wait for the sparkle. It's like a fifth of a stick of dynamite. What are you talking about? <laughs> JJ, you said this was a firework. It means it's going to have sparkles. It's going to have colors. It's going to be delightful, guys. Oh. Just look it. Okay. This is a Mexican paloma. <laughs> Basically just a bunch of gunpowder <laughs> newspaper. Man, he knows yep. sold what you just said, bro. <laughs> and no, sh no shit, right? <laughs> Him and his fucking high-ass socks. Look, there, there's going to be colors. <laughs> that newspaper is colored. Yeah. <laughs> there's going to be at least some green and yellow. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so fun. I 
let's go play with fireworks, guys. Let's go find some fireworks to play with. Yeah, yeah I, I got some eye protection. Have memories of my grandpa's dog hating fireworks. Oh, yeah. But he didn't do, no, not like scared, I hate fireworks. He would grab them and Oh, no. <laughs> like, I distinctly remember, I don't know what the firework was called. I don't remember what any firework was called outside of tanks. But uh, it was like a box of flowers. And then when you lit it, it would just sparkle upwards. And I distinctly remember the dog grabbing it and then running away and oh. trying to destroy it. And I was just like, "Are you sure it wasn't doing is burning I your think, mouth? Are you sure this wasn't the this was the meme that you were talking a about?" Happiness found. I think that's what that was. Wait for it! Wait for it! Whee! <laughs> he do that too, but no. That's not the same power. <laughs> I want him on my side for the power store. <laughs> Would you find this video from 1984? I want to say well, it was like a gift for a long time. Uh, Might have been America's Funniest Home Videos, the honestly. Garage band like, soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh what I By cut out. Was... Hold on. What I cut out was the Windows Movie Maker <laughs> blue title. Dog with firework. <laughs> my, my bro, if you take away that fucking. Um, Video, that's a porn soundtrack. <laughs> what are you talking about? There is no porno. I'm here to fix the pipes. <laughs> Do you feel aroused by me doing this? <laughs> oh, that's a big clog you got there. <laughs> <laughs> about to set my fireworks off. It's a good thing I got a mighty big wrench. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were still doing fireworks. Hold on. Hold on. We're, this is a fireworks based porno, not a wrench based porno, oh, okay? I, I go back, was, go back and I said I was here to clean the pipes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm here to set off my Roman candle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this does not fit. This is stockmusic.jpg, I swear to God. Um, but by the way, I stole the Roman candles from Christina. Who mentioned it? Because I don't know the scene from um, Joe Dirt where he names off all the different ones. <laughs> no whisker all, do's or whisker don'ts. That's the only ones I know. With or without the fiddlestick. Most of those are fake. <laughs> oh, I know, yeah. but it's just fun to say. But anyway, I think we've Not gone over. A single whistling kitty chaser. <laughs> JJ, remember that scene? <laughs> um, but no, those are our Christmas traditions. That's a solid base because now we're going to get to the Mexican traditions as a whole because I feel like we didn't explain a lot of them or you guys held off as I asked you to to kind of go into them because um, there's a lot of Mexican traditions that you know we partaked in or just didn't night, and I want to go over those and Bad G is going to sleep. Bad G is a nice cutoff time because in the second half we're going to talk about Mexican Christmas traditions. We'll be right back after these breaks but they're not going to be long breaks because we already did the Manscaped ad. So... We'll refresh our beverage. Don't be too far away. We'll be right back. Santa baby, the season four fresh cut is finally here with today's sponsors, Manscaped, Manscaped.com. Welcome everybody to the Manscaped Dad. Did you know? That the leaders in below the waist grooming have just launched their fifth generation lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. I've told you about it many times before. And now I'm telling you about it again in the context of a very happy holiday, Merry Christmas season. So here's the thing. Avoid another silent night in the bedroom. And make sure that your body, your face, your groin, everything is shaved so closely, or to your liking, or whatever, you know, maybe just a trim, maybe a light, uh, a, a, a light uh, passing over with the hair trimming. But you know what? Whatever you decide to do, take care of your special snowflake with the manscaped items and watch your South Pole shine like ever, never before. Get the best stocking stuffer of all time by going to manscaped.com and using coupon code MEX20 for 20% off and free shipping off of everything. And guess what? There's a holiday sale going on right now. So, if you use coupon code MEX20, you can get 20% off the entire website and free shipping. If you go right now during the holiday sale, you can get 20% off the entire website and free shipping. But what was I telling you about the perfect stock stocking stuffers? Those stocking stuffers include the Weed Whacker, the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Uh, here, you know, you know, maybe someone smells a little funky. These are some of the things that we never really talk about. The Persevere Cologne, a light woodsy scent that answers the call of the wild by leaving you smelling like a man forged from the earth. Blending bergamot, lavender, cumin, cedarwood, and moss for a clean, crisp, everyday scent. Here's the thing. TJ fell in love with these scents 
at Manscaped because all of the scents are like Manscaped branded and they all kind of are somewhat uniform. And TJ has never smelled better. So if you want to smell amazing, if you want to get the best stocking stuffers in the nation, you can go to Manscaped.com and pick any one of these. Let's look at the formulations. You got the body care kit. You got the crop preserver, the soother, the balms, the cleansers, foot duster. I never talk about the foot duster. Make sure your feet smell nice and good manscaped.com use come on code next one for 15 off and free shipping your balls yourself and i and sandy claus he'll thank you too sandy you need to shave get with it i can see your bush through your pants manscaped.com use come on code next one for 15 off and free shipping okay bye daddy you gotta tocar la cucaracha la cucaracha what the fuck Eso no es una cucaracha, es ese niño Jesús. <laughs> Welcome back to another commercial break, everybody. We're talking about Mexican Christmas traditions, and as you see right there, the baby cucaracha, aka the baby Jesus, um, nativity scenes. That was one of the first things I looked. I googled it, Mexican Christmas traditions, just to see what they gave me, and the first one was nativity scenes, and I was like, was that really a big deal in our family? We have a little one. On a desktop that we've had since I was a baby, probably even before that. Um, and the only other thing, speaking of nativity scenes, my first credited acting role, that was uncredited, I should say, I was the baby Jesus in a nativity for my church growing up. I was like two months old, fresh baby, and they were like, we need a baby for Jesus. And the mom was like, sure, here's my baby for Jesus. So we need a big baby they can see from the back. Well, that was the thing. <laughs> First of all, rude. Second of all, not wrong. No, because I, You've I had, already told several stories about how you were a big baby. Well, no, I wasn't at initially. I was a, I was actually a little La Cucaracha baby right here because <laughs> I was orange, just like that Cucaracha baby. I had jaundice growing up as a baby, so I was actually a regular baby. Then they put me full of steroids so I can fight my liver undevelopment or kidney. <laughs> That's development. how you ended up so much taller than your brother. That's no, my brother's six foot. It's one, three, yeah. two inches, three inches. It's four inches. If your brother's six foot, I'm six you're four. six four. Yeah, that's three inches. Math. Six to six four is four. No, he's six one. Oh, I thought you said he was six. No, he's six one. Point is, <laughs> I'm much thicker than him because of that. The point but is, you took the super soldier serum. I took the super soldier serum, went from regular baby to chubby baby. My head was always gonna be big. Not, I mean, <laughs> I mean, look at. You were like George Lopez of the show. There was no hope. There was no hope for me right there. That's a that is a grown woman's head, and then that is my head compared. To the yeah, same but that's size. after you took the serum. Maybe that, you. <laughs> like, it, most of my life was post the serum. Anyway, so Go on. Um, if you could scoot in a little bit, you're drifting off camera entirely. Um, so I, they shot me full of baby steroids and then um, put me under some lamps, and then by Christmas I was fine. Baby steroids are those safer for? <laughs> Smaller uh, doses. Find out. Smaller doses, I think. But no, and then I, they were like, yeah. Apparently, I was like crying Can all I shake through. those up in my pre-workout? <laughs> <laughs> it's not safer for you like baby aspirins, okay? I mean, I was going to say uh, on the note of what you were just transitioning to, a baby under a hot lamp was not going to do well. Oh, no. It was not. No, it was more like vitamin D. I think it was vitamin D lamps. So, the, so they're, like, they're like the ones for lizards. So not tempered, like not quite I feel hot. like this is worse. <laughs> They're only letting, giving credence to like the lizard people theory. <laughs> yes, you I'm the li lizard lamp. <laughs> yes, I'm the lizard people. JJ, I blink sideways and my flesh is made of scaly scales. And behind you were my given neck. juices to help you live. <laughs> <laughs> it was steroids and a heat lamp, okay, and some crickets, <laughs> like some cucarachas, okay. Maybe. All right, no. so you came out a hot and ready, and <laughs> <laughs> you fuck because. <laughs> Because my my like I said I'm I'm quite significantly younger than um my niece my niece and nephews my um siblings and so they saw me under the little lamp that I needed to be in when I was a kid and so they called me Bobo Lee <laughs> which is a pizza crust so the pizza themed insults continue from my good friend JJ over there um let me see here oh you just remind me Sammy when me and my young cousin were teens we added characters to the nativity scene for example we added a small Yoda Obi Wan and anime Jesus figure. Figures. You had an anime Jesus figure? That was a thing? Yeah, yeah. There's a... That was Rico Hero, by the way. <laughs> There's an action Bible, which is manga form. What? <laughs> action Bible? 
I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what JJ is talking about, but I feel like I could buy that the central. I mean, it, dude, was that Walmart? <laughs> Action yeah, yeah. Study Bible. What is it happening? Was that Walmart? <laughs> that looks kind of sick as fuck. I'm not gonna lie. Action Bible. I used to believe in peace, but now I believe in this. <laughs> Get him, Jesus! <laughs> oh my God! He flipped the table. <laughs> Shit! He's got a whip. Oh, what the fuck is this? He's doing something here. He's, he's using the table. Tsukiyomi. He's, fl- <laughs> he's, throwing, he's throwing a whole ass dude above his head. Oh my God! Uh, Moses he's got the Rasen gun, the shouting gun, <laughs> all the guns. The action. Is this YouTube? Yeah. The action Bible read aloud. Do you want the action? <laughs> here, fine. Fuck it. We're in the spirit of Christmas. You can't put the Christ to Christmas. People are gonna get mad. Let's appease some of these people who want the Christ in Christmas by doing it in anime manga form. Sean! Week, oh my god, Sean's here. Jesus meets with his disciples. It's not the same Sean, it's a different Sean. Oh. You keep getting confused. No, we were happy that Sean's here. <laughs> Welcome, where's Sean? It's not the same Sean, though. In a place called the Upper Room, Jesus picks up a piece of bread. He thanks God for it, breaks it, and gives it to his disciples. And then, he says, with the power of his stand... <laughs> He turns well, that piece of bread into 30. This, Enough to red? feed many. <laughs> Nani? <laughs> why is this read by the same <laughs> voice of the guy that like narrates uh, History Channel specials? <laughs> this is my body. <laughs> and them a cup. And that's when the aliens showed up. <laughs> it should have been done by the guy from Deadliest Warrior, which I tried to watch this weekend. I got baited. It was ended up being just like Ocean's Eleven. But remember Deadliest Warrior? Yeah. That show? I have Human so flesh many people and bone. Put holes in that show on TikTok now. Well, what are you talking about? They formed the results on an Excel sheet. Yeah, because that's how their <laughs> algorithms work. They simulate human flesh and bone. Don't you remember? It was so a guy. We all agree the pirate would win against the knight, right? No, because they have gunpowder. I will stand by that. Gunpowder would still beat, would still beat the knight, just because you have a high, giant chest plate. The pirate did win that one. Yeah, just so yeah, you no, know. No, but he wanted he, you. You wanted the knight to win, though. Yeah, because they they literally the gun didn't go off in the demonstration. Because, yeah, because <laughs> in the testing, it's like, oh well. It, I guess it got slightly wet because of the humidity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and even if it did go off, I can't aim this bitch. <laughs> just because flintlock is not an effective way for having gunpowder doesn't mean flintlock they- rifling. <laughs> oh, whatever. It has no fucking rifling. You can't aim. <laughs> thereabouts. Thereabouts is fine as long as you're far enough from sword length. That's about the distance a little bit further away. It mid hit something. He has armor. Yeah, that's what, well, when it did go off, it did make a dent in it and it hurt his chest, but he also has a cutlass. Cutlasses are better. That, um, well, no, not against armor, but... Um, Despite what One Piece might tell you, oh. not all not all pirates were trained swordsmen. <laughs> did one of them have one in their mouth, though? Is that was traditional pirate no, that lore. that would be a trained swordsman. Oh. <laughs> I do remember the, the pirate sword did cut the pig in half, though. Like, I was like, damn, that's actually super I was impressive. actually impressed by that. Like, <laughs> no, oh. I, I thought... Pirate swords would be like the equivalent of my mom's kitchen knives. Oh, <laughs> no. It's like you gotta... <laughs> Look, between getting scurvy, they had to do something with their free time, so they're just sharpening their sword, and that is not a masturbation joke. It very well could have been, but it's not. They, they definitely masturbated. Oh, no. <laughs> In between shanties. It, it was, <laughs> pirates, shanties, masturbation, and sword sharpening. Put that in a manga. As Jesus stumbles under the weight of his cross, the streets fill with a strange mixture of spectators and mourners. And that's what Christmas is all about. I mean, no. It's not about him dying. That's what Easter's about. No, (laughs) it's about him coming back. But he needs to die on Friday in order to come back. It's, okay, fine. Where is his birth? On a Sunday. <laughs> Where is his... Look, there's a lot of lore, okay, that goes behind actual Christ and Christmas. And that was what, like, half of the stupid, like, Mexican celebrate... Because it was all white people telling me how Mexicans celebrate on these blogs. Um, but that was, like, half of them were, like, Mexico celebrates the Jesus part of it. And they were, like, making a big above about, like, nativity scenes. And then we'll get to some of the other ones in a bit. But... Just want to branch off from La Cucaracha, the nativity scenes. Do you guys have nativity scenes in the house? Or did you guys do one like on the lawn? I've seen people go as far as doing. We never did. We were never huge on decorating. There were years where we forgot to put up a tree. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, we didn't do that either. Yeah, uh-huh. we weren't super big on decorations. My mom likes putting up the lights. Uh-huh. She doesn't like taking them down so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair, because nobody helps her in this house. Uh, no, like, 
by my mom likes to put up the lights, I meant my mom likes to tell my dad to put up the lights. Oh, that. gotcha. <laughs> she likes pretty things. Um, so now me and my brother just buy her like one of those projectors that like puts pretty lights uh, on the house. That is pretty, that, you know what? A <laughs> little bit of a shortcut still works. I like it. I'll allow it. Um, but yeah, we never did like big decorations. We had a tree for like when I was little, mm -hmm. we had the same like fake tree for the longest time. Yeah. But yeah, I remember like maybe seventh or eighth grade there was a year where we were like oh shit it's christmas oh no <laughs> like, oh my there's god there's no tree well we weren't expecting anyone oh like, gotcha that, oh yeah so who's the tree time, for it was like yeah paco was 18 already oh uh, <laughs> gotcha oh, okay so yeah it was it was and Every, they didn't start releasing there's the more 18 year olds than there are like under 18 year -olds. and they didn't even so release no the coming. hipster uh, charlie brown tree that you could buy at like home depot for 20 bucks yeah yeah it's not even that type of level but um that's we did it. have like a nativity scene like in the house, but that was kind of just there. Like, right, it wasn't those big special days. things. <laughs> yeah, Marcos, no nativities, no nothing. And that no, was nativity. nativity. My grandma did, but uh, I mean, if you want to talk about traditions, my grandma did go to church at midnight. Right. Okay. After. Well, that goes into what you started at the end of the last segment. Goes into uh, what was it uh, Noche Buena, which is you know good night. It was Christmas Eve essentially. So. I don't go to church or did neither did I didn't go to church or have a nativity scene. Okay, well that was the thing. So yeah. the, if we're talking about just Noche Buena in general, I didn't we didn't do church. We barely started going to church once we moved houses. Like we moved away from our home church and then we were like, oh well it's a drive and the Raiders are playing and then we stopped going to church and that was the end of our like religious nonsense not nonsense or religious traditions or something like that. So we did that right there, but as you mentioned, you were a family of Midnight, you open presents on Christmas Eve. Some people did it at like seven o'clock. It was like it's, it's it's on the East Coast. It's midnight, so we're gonna open them now. And then some people did like what we did. Damn, California cheated that hard. Some people, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Day time I remember, zones. Uh, I remember there was one ten, year when, whatever. Like me Nine. and all my cousins were like, we want presents now. So we made like bullshit protest signs and we're like we want presents what? <laughs> that seems like a Bart Simpson thing to do like a like a very rebellious thing on yeah, behalf yeah. it's collective bargaining honestly you should, you should probably start a union JJ I think it's your calling unionize your job is what I'm telling you to do they're already they're working on it there you go just, well, then you'll be there get your protest sign be like I want presents and it's just crossed out more pay that's all you're one step away JJ from starting just a union JJ more money exactly you're, that's and that's how you start a union this Christmas but no um, so yeah it was 9 o'clock so 9, 10, 11, 12 so 9 o'clock Christmas evening midnight like New Year's level and then there was Christmas morning so you were midnight yeah, it was midnight. Where were you, JJ? When did you guys open presents? Midnight, except for that one year when we protested. And so nobody did morning. You guys just did not do morning. No. Okay, so I'm I'm the odd man out because we did Christmas morning. We, our tradition was, Mex yeah, there you go, Mexilence Union. No, <laughs> do they can't unionize. We're a family here. We're a family here at the Mexilence Podcast. You get one dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you get one Fogo de Chao steak dinner, all right? It was Fogo, and Fogo de Chao was last year, so we're actually going like... Unless we get two next year. <laughs> <laughs> We're a family here at the Mexlins. We don't need any so sort of unions year, getting involved. getting an Olive Garden dinner. <laughs> Actually, that might be cheaper. So, all right, we'll, we'll take a look about when it. when you're there, you're family. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, see? And then Rakeen did. I did midnight, but I only got to open one gift at midnight. Actually, we did do that a couple times. Where, yeah, midnight happened. You opened one present from the family who just gave it to you so you could see your faces. But then we did Christmas morning. And Christmas morning was always so cute in my family because I'm the baby. And so I'd be the one waking up my dad at 6 in the morning. And can I tell you, to, to this day, I cannot sleep Christmas Eve. Like, I, I get the kid jitters where I'm like... First of all, I have I'm insomniac anyway, so I don't sleep anymore. But even like in high school, college, I'd be like, "It's Christmas," and I couldn't sleep. And so I'd be up at six in the morning, like, "Who's up? Anybody? No, okay, I'm just gonna watch the Christmas story again." So for I'd, me, it's my birthday. Yeah, yeah, like, my <laughs> birthday. I, that I'm pretty sure that's why I'm short because I never slept. Oh, that does not <laughs> like how it works, JJ. I, I would wake up like every morning, like a hungover, like fifty year old, like, uh. <laughs> oh, it's my birthday! <laughs> oh, it's my birthday, and so I would wake up my dad, and my dad, to, in order to get more time, this is how the tradition started. He's like, 
did you brush your teeth? And I was like, no, because I was like Christmas. So he's like, go brush your teeth. Go brush my teeth. Come back. Did you comb your hair? No, go comb your head. Yeah, would you wipe your feet? That's Fucking, he would just send me back and forth. Just do shit. I was say, so that's why you shave your head. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! <laughs> one less. Yeah, one less thing. I just brush my teeth and wipe my feet. No. Um, you still call your dad at like six in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm there. I haven't missed a Christmas since I was a kid. So like, I'm I, the thing is now it's my nephew who's now a grown ass man. So now there's a baby or nephew, and we go go wake up grandpa. And we send him in, and he goes and he shakes him. My dad, when my dad's out, that's when we start. He's the last one now. Um, but no, I'm still up at six in the morning. Just like where's the pre- where's present is the present time yet um and um but that was always our little tradition in terms of waking up what is no no i just remember like the covid year like which was the least christmas christmas like um and i had a lot of fun but it was, I, this is gonna sound really depressing when i say it like i didn't want to drive very far so i woke up at like seven in the morning I bought a 12 pack and I bought a shitload of Totino's pizza rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Played Gears of War all day. <laughs> and in the background, just have Viva yourself <laughs> a merry little Christmas. <laughs> just playing <laughs> Totino's pizza roll. Tom! <laughs> no! <laughs> no but Marcos, that sounds like what a little nice. kid. What a little kid would wish Christmas was. Like, <laughs> I wish I could Fuck just that, wake up. That's what I wish Christmas was. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So what? On Twitter was like, well, like family oh. couldn't come over, like nothing, like yeah, nobody nothing, could do anything. Uh, yeah, so it was just like just drove to the gas station, picked up two <laughs> bags of Totino. Like, damn, gas station Totino's pizza. They're like nine dollars a piece, probably. Yeah, but I had excess money because I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. So yeah, I mean that because that's the thing. Um, presents in the morning. Pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, <laughs> and pizza at supper time. Well, that's actually that's pizza bagels. That's pizza bagels. There you yeah. go. But um, do they still sell those? I'm sure. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Well, the uh, Mojo Dojo Casa House hors d'oeuvres right there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that the next pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> pizza on a big girl. No, but everything will be pizza. <laughs> <laughs> pizza bagels, pizza bites, Pringles pretzel, uh, pizza pizza, pre- pre- pizza Pringles. Hot pockets. Pizza, yeah. pretzel sticks, <laughs> hot pockets. I fuck with hot pockets. All the Don't salsa will be just like ragu. Spare <laughs> <laughs> <Just marinara> sauce. <laughs> and mozzarella sticks. <laughs> this sounds like the coolest fucking party ever, guys. You guys need to have a Christmas party this weekend so that my girlfriend can come with me and eat all the mozzarella. She doesn't eat cheese, but I will eat all the mozzarella sticks on your um, behalf. Can she so, eat bread? Like if we just do bread? <laughs> Sauce and bread. Yeah. I can make bread. I can make some. I mean, that's literally what bread. breadsticks are. Sometimes. Fuck it. We're having we're having a very pizza Christmas. <laughs> Funded by the excellence. Let's do it. Fuck. I make pizza. some fucking good bread. Yeah, Manny Park Films know. pizza. I just don't know how far the rules are. Sometimes some people can't do eggs. I don't even know if eggs are in ma- ma- Dude, she eats full they... fucking chickens now. <laughs> I've gotten her off a of vegan. It's fucking great. <laughs> So it's so much easier to find food now, and like, you you had a vegan girlfriend for a long time. You never I had a vegetarian. Vegetarian, and yeah. So a lot of things were on the table. I don't know where the where. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but she was and never the broken. Part that really threw me was that she was also allergic to bananas. So there was one time she was allergic to bananas and egg whites, and I'm like, damn, like no fun. Life just wants you to die, <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude. Garlic and onions. But there was one allergy. That, That's like, so hard. Damn. I know. So she can't eat pizza then. Pizza! <laughs> <laughs> no, she can eat pizza. She just won't enjoy most of it. She's going to be like the fucking count in uh, what we do in the shadows. <laughs> 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 um, okay, well, so go ahead. To, to your presence in the morning point, uh, we would open all the presents from the family mm. at midnight. We had to go to sleep and wait for the morning for, for Santa. Santa. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I still get presents from Santa. I'm still a good boy, according to Santa's lore. So I appreciate that very much. I don't. Uh, yeah, I legit get presents from Santa. Still, do you get presents from Santa? No. Oh, well, you've been a bad, got a, bad boy. I haven't got a present from Santa since I was like 17. And then uh, when I was 17, like my parents were straight up like. I mean, they already knew he wasn't real. Hey, so my just... nephew watches this. He's 14 years old. The illusion may still be there. I don't know. He hasn't helped us with the presents, so I mean, maybe the, he's the a good boy. Maybe he's a good boy. The oh, maybe he's a good boy. It's a thing. He just. 
doesn't want to give up the grift yet. And, and I respect the hustle. You, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of when one of one of the goats was given up of my lucrative career, um, the Tooth Fairy. I fa- I found my mom my teeth in a bag, looking for like a like paperwork for my mom. And I was like, Mom, what's with all my teeth in this bag? And my dad goes, Look. <laughs> tooth fairy's not real here's 20 bucks for the rest of your teeth i had like four more and it just like popped out and he's like no more don't even do it so i mean santa santa was like we had the rat yeah yeah i think i was 17 when i was 17 like my parents were straight up like we're just replacing the j- the top on your jeep like <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> i mean which like in, if you take a step back, that's like a four hundred dollar thing. No, it's so. a good present. It's a good present, but but it was not because you were a good boy. In that it's gotta hurt. It's gotta hurt a little bit because we, we're told to be good all year. I don't know when my parents knew that I didn't know, but we both knew, and we were both like, <laughs> like Mexican standoff with two people. Are, 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 are you really gonna break Juan's dreams? You can't break Juan's dreams. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna be the one to do it, Mom no, and Dad. Is it gonna be you? Hey, I've been good. I've, have you been good? Have I been saying, good? I'm saying, I would really like a PS2 this year. Right. <laughs> Ooh, Santa. Santa don't got budgets. No, that, that's actually, you know what? Question. The sidebar question. Um, you have a kid, so I don't know how you uh, have you operated this. Uh, she clearly doesn't watch the show. Um, no. I've heard that some people say you should give the most expensive gifts from the parent as to not make poor children feel bad that they didn't get big presents from Santa. So like a smaller present should be from Never Santa. This. Uh, this is a, it's a, it's a parenting thing. I, I, I'm curious about the concept, right? I, so I never heard this concept, so I can't. I yeah. Can't well, really to, to kind of go yeah. into it. Yeah. It's like, it, it's mostly from teachers. Like teachers are like, Oh, one kid will come in the class and be like, Santa got me a PS five. And another kid's like, Santa got me some underwear. <laughs> And they start crying because they didn't get a fucking PS5 because they thought they were a bad boy. So therefore, they're inherently thinking that they're bad because they're poor. And then they go commit crime, is one, as, one assumes. <laughs> <laughs> one assumes that's their next logical I step think in life. There's uh, a couple other steps somewhere along the way. But, uh, well, I'm right. pretty sure they use the present first. They <laughs> put the underwear on their head, <laughs> <laughs> cut some holes in it, and commit more crime. And then steal a PS5. And that's their start of crime. Sam is um, not going to get me a PS5. I'm gonna get it myself. <laughs> nah, even we you. were robbed by Captain Underpants. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, they were tidy whities Oh god, they weren't even real boxers. They were just tidy whities Extremely logical. So she knew Santa was never real. Like from like at least three or four. You mean- <laughs> Jesus Christ! She's like, you mean to tell me. bullshit? <laughs> well, no, because like, <laughs> canon event some- for Santa. <laughs> <laughs> but like when. <clears throat> She was three or four, and this is just another random example of it. They took her to go see, like, Disney on Ice, some sort of thing like that. She wasn't watching the show. Uh Uh-huh. She was watching, like, the people past the curtain. Oh, like the set designers and shit? Yeah, she was watching them dress up and do all this other stuff. So she never believed, like, Elsa was performing for her. Oh. She was like, oh, I can see. (laughs) I can see. There's a very talented performer that's shaded by the fact that she's Elsa. Elsa's not real. The performer is. Yes. She's going to be a fucking type A. If she gets to the theater, she's going to be fucking a stage manager. It's going to be hilarious. Yes, probably. She's going to be so fucking good at that. If she's (laughs) four years old looking at logistics and stages and shit, I do that she now wasn't watching behind the <clears throat> behind the scenes she was watching take that. her to disneyland man we should, we should take her to disneyland so she could see all the facade shit and like unravel it i did that in movies but only for the promise of boobs <laughs> <laughs> it elaborate uh the fifth element i tried to see beyond oh! because i was like Oh, that's the second time she takes off her top. I wonder. Mm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so DVD frame by frame was very important to you. No, this up. was in theaters. Oh. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying. Afterwards, you were like, "Let yes. me confirm my suspicions. <laughs> Let me go to the bargain oh. bin and find the fifth element, please." Believe me, I knew at eleven in theaters that like, nope. She went all the way. No, they did this. <laughs> she committed to the role. She committed to the bit. Jovovich, yep. you are an Oscar-worthy actress. And I, I mean, look, I, I love every one of those Resident Evil movies. <laughs> also, Rakeen, ooh, JJ, you horn dog. <laughs> JJ has, has stated in not so many words, or maybe even less words, or maybe even more words, that he is a breast man. 
You like some. You like boobs. I like all aspects of women. Aspects <laughs> of women. I the see what you. I included. see what you did there. The brain. The brain. Most importantly, right, JJ? Yeah. <laughs> he said I, super convincingly. I would said. like for them to have one. <laughs> oh, so, so present is what you're looking for. Speaking yep. of presents, going back to Christmas, posadas. Did you do posadas? No. Never. Have you ever done the posada where you walk? I've and, heard of work posadas. That's about it. What's work posadas? Like it's just. Your, it's just the office Christmas party. Oh yeah. no! See, posadas in my family for some reason. We're a running gag, but then we did because we actually we got it from Disney. Actually, the Three Caballeros talked about posadas. There's a whole segment. By the way, just like a weird like sidebar on things that people get from pop culture kind of thing. Uh-huh. I didn't have no ofrenda at all. We we didn't either, and like I, we technically did. I just didn't know it was called that. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's just like oh, dead family and Are, candles. Was it really an ofrenda then, or just like your your family's pictures with candles? Candles being the operative part of it, it like both, because <laughs> right. it was in my grandma's room, and it was like her her parents. Like, so I remember when I was thirteen. Like this was maybe eighth grade Mm -hmm. there's this friend of the family that would come in from mexico and uh, i think he had a crush on my sister fair (laughs) fair uh but like he would come in and like since both my parents worked it was usually me and my brother at home Mm -hmm. like a lot of the time so he would show up like at odd hours Mm -hmm. and it was just me home and like we would talk and then he saw like all these pictures that my grandma had put up, and he was like, "Well, who's that guy?" I was like, ah. <laughs> and then in the vocal world, he fucking dissolved into shit, and he was gone forever. Well, no, because my grandma's still alive. So, okay, <laughs> like, my grandma knows who he the is. The moment she died, though, yeah, yeah fucking. But, but then that fucker tatted on me, and he was like, "JJ doesn't know shit about his family." Oh no! <laughs> and then so then I had like an hour long lecture from my grandma, like. Those are my parents. <laughs> right. Um, my dad died really young. Mm-hmm. So I, that one looks a little different because I went to an artist. Like I had an actual picture of my right. mom <laughs> at, at when she was old. Yeah. And I went to like a sketch artist and I had him age up this picture of my gra- of my dad. Oh, okay. And that's why he looks so similar between the two. Right, yeah. He just Because <laughs> it's just like, it's yeah. an artist's rendition. This is maybe probably what he might have looked like. Hey, now, now AI can do that. <laughs> now AI can do the whole fucking police sketch thing that they do when the children are lost. Yeah. So you're and fine. And then my grandma's like, and that's like my uncle. He'd be your grunkle <laughs> if, if he was grunkle still Sam. around. <laughs> right. So you got the whole lecture based off of everybody. Yeah, yeah. But you didn't have the uh, the marigolds or anything like that. No, no, no. It yeah, was no, just... Yeah. yeah a lot was... of people... Actually, a lot of people Coco did influence that where they're like, yeah, let's do the whole thing. Yeah, my, this my, didn't happen 10 years ago. Yeah, I was about to say my cousins started doing it, but we didn't. We never did that shit. Well, well, like, and like the Posadas, my grandma was religious. She like go to the church. She was real close to the church community. And so they would put me in the play when I was a baby. And then they would do um, you know, the walking. And I remember doing it once as a kid and then being like, oh my God, this is so fucking boring. Because you would just be walking in the neighborhood, stop and be like, Posada? And they're like, no, Posada. And they push you away. And at the end, they had a party. Like they invited in, you get the drinks or whatever, and then my dad was like, "Okay, we're done, let's go," because <laughs> my dad didn't want any part of that shit either. But no, we learned about it from three uh, three caballeros, and they like get really into it. No shelter, no posada. So like, I learned the whole thing from this essentially, and this little cute little chubby chibi animation. But then you repeat the song and you go door to door, and like I said, we did it the one time. I remember the one time, and it was just like so, so tired. It was cold. I was shorter than everybody. I couldn't see the people asking for the posada, and I'm like, "Fuck, I don't want to do this no more." So you guys didn't do that. No. Okay. Not really. No. Okay. Here's another one. This one is the holiday time. This one you might actually do, but I didn't even know this existed until I joined the Chicano floor in my college. Um, literally no premise, and then all the you know, but Mexican Buzzfeeds came out and they told me about it. Rosca de Reyes. Never did that. Yes. Did that. I did do that. 
Uh, but not Christmas. It was a little after, is the tradition, right? January 6th. January. Mm, where were you on January 6th, JJ? <laughs> this is a Mexican guy holding a rosca, just like eating it while raiding the capital. It's the it's Three Kings Day. Right, yes. Dia de los Reyes Magos. Right, because yeah. like, yeah. And that's from, well, this might just be my dad trolling me because he didn't want me to open presents. <laughs> right, but. But he would always tell us that you kids are super fucking spoiled. Not only do we let you guys open presents at midnight, <laughs> um. You don't know, like, you're not supposed to open your presents in the traditional Mexican way, like, the, this is my dad talking. Okay, your dad's legend, <laughs> your dad's lore, if you will. Until El Dia de los Reyes Magos, mm. until Three Kings Day. Right. You have to wait until January 6th to open your presents. God, that's <laughs> not a fun time. No. Not like, a fun but time. But they're here now. Like, right. You would probably get them later, right? Like, they wouldn't show... You, they have been taunting me since. <laughs> we have your since, presents. <laughs> You're never gonna open them since December 10. Like oh. in, in your lore, they probably wouldn't show up until January 1st. You only had to wait a week, Dad. Like, don't <laughs> oh you God. fucking lie to me. <laughs> God damn it! That's it. I haven't even given a family Christmas list, so I'm gonna get this fucking bread. I'm gonna get this bread. I'm gonna get this little baby. I never understood it. All I knew is that people were choking on it and eating this plastic baby, so they didn't have to bring it next year. That was literally the only thing I learned from the internet. So that was one that they had they on did, a lot they of did lists. The same thing as fucking um, the bread for Mardi Gras. Yeah, yeah. King's King's bread. I think it's what it's the, called. It's it's the same. Same. It's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> we talking about Rosca de Reyes or King's bread? No, but, the, but here's a little plastic they, baby. They look kind of the same. Yeah, it, well, one's a ring. It's legit the same. Yeah. <laughs> Catholics. <laughs> Catholics are everywhere. I wonder where we got it from. Right. Now, there, here's a real question. Now, I, I did make fun of it um, at the beginning of the show because, like I said, all these listicles are like, everybody makes tamales. Did you ever get roped into the fucking uh, manufacturing line of tamales? Yeah. It's hard. I did it one time, and I was uh, baby brother uh, antics. Suck at it. You'll get kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> baby brother, baby brother antics. I'm like, you can't do it. But, Learn that real quick. <laughs> but that shit is so hard. It is so hard. It's and, easier with the paddle. Oh, well, there, there's a lady with a fucking uh, uh, cincher thing right there, the little uh, flattening tool. Mostly those are for tamales, that plastic wrap flattener thing. But like, let's see how you. This is a hack, apparently. Let's see. My okay. birthday is the seventh. You're not getting anything. Well, now I know she's. Uh, I don't know what the fuck. I know a little bit about astrology that our signs aren't supposed to get along. Are or are not. Are not. Well, this is cheating as shit. I don't like this at all. Nope, that's not traditional. You know what? It needs the blood, sweat, and tears. The thing is, the amount of tamales that get made. Hold on, let me see if I can find a, a, a proper line. See, I'm totally making line. Because that, first of all, the masa. Masa I, sucks to make. Fucking forearms, dude. Just, mm, I gotta do it. It's super fucking hard. And then just like the, the I never got the fold down. Like, yeah, I, I got tired of, of the of the masa rolling. There we go. Here, th these are a factory, but it's like a literal factory. It's Especially now, Antonio and team people in this factory push Damn. out almost 4,000 dozen tamales a day. That's the way she does it. It's hard. I can't do it like that. Jason Rodriguez <laughs> Jr. has been a part of the team for about six years. I came when I was a youngster and then I grew up here. I matured here. He started at youngster. Jesus Christ. I'm trying. I'm why am I not finding like the row of people? Maybe it's just maybe people don't record that. Maybe it's just too too intense of a situation. Because I don't know for some reason it did get heated. People would always get mad at some point of what of, of just like people not doing it right or folding it the right way or steaming them the right way. JJ, did you ever get caught in the line? Yeah. Of uh, like, did I catch a stray for not like spreading the? <laughs> yeah. Did you have you have you or someone you know been a victim of your grandma mad at you while making tamales? Yeah, I, I've been hit with a wooden spoon or two. Like. Golly, dude. That that hurts. Wooden spoons hurt on the knuckles. <laughs> oh my god! Um, another one that this was actually new in my tradition, um, other than tamales. Um, I never had otole until very re like recently, mm -hmm. and that's yeah, exactly. I, mean, I know it's not a like specifically Christmas thing. It's just a warm, delicious drink. Yeah. But yeah. fuck, it's delicious, dude. And if you don't know what it is, I don't even. I didn't even know what it was for the longest time. Let me see. What does it say? As a uh, atole. 
is, uh, let's see, from a Mayan origin, it is traditional hot corn and masa-based beverage of Mexican origin. Atole can have different flavors, such as vanilla, cinnamon, and guava. Chocolate atole is known as champurado, which is one of my favorite Champura- Spanish yeah. words. <laughs> champurado is such a fun word to say in Spanish. I definitely had atole and a champurado. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've, I just never had it until, like, what, three years ago or something like that? Someone was like, oh, I made this. And I'm like, what is this? And I called it Aztec gravy. That's how, because it was so thick. I was like, what is this Aztec gravy? Uh, and Rico Hero also agrees. Atole is delicious. Straight up magma, but delicious magma. Side note, sidebar, used to love eggnog. Can't do it anymore. Really? Yeah. I used to See, fucking I've only had eggnog like three times in my life. I've... And one of them was at Gert's Thanksgiving a month ago. Oh, really? He had yeah. eggnog there? That's a little weird for Thanksgiving. A little early, but well, I'll allow apparently it. Apparently him and his girlfriend, Samantha, love eggnog. So okay. they're just in the sea. It, it's, I mean, I like pumpkin, so it's. I get everyone has like probably one weird thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, what did you think of of, of uh, eggnog now as an adult without rum? Or with rum? Was it alcoholic? No, we had yeah, rum. But was it? it was still a matter of like, I don't dislike eggnog for me it's just kind of like a new flavor every time i have it because uh-huh. it's so spaced out right so yeah. so it's good to me but and then I, there's so many different recipes for it too like oh i get the box make it with rum some people make it with whiskey so i get the box it, whatever's in the box no alcohol can i can you do warm alcohols by the way like warm holiday alcohols yeah hotty toddy yeah, hot hot toddy i can't do it I don't know why the chemicals or the heat and the alcohol. It's like I don't like. I, it's, it's something it's in my brain don't like it. Tea with a kicker, like that's all it is. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. Well, it's there's a honey lemon tea with a kicker. <laughs> well, there's only one other thing that I had to bring up really because we brought treats. We got 1920s cookbook recipes. We got I never posada. Bread house, if that's weird. Oh no, it was. I mean, I was. I mean, never did that really I had either. To do that for like a school project, and <laughs> my mom was mad at me because she was like. You always wait until the last fucking minute to tell me that you have a fucking project due. You're just like your dad. You don't do shit when I tell you. <laughs> but then, Jesus Christ. But, <laughs> bringing like, up old random yeah, shit. End of the yeah, there was you. a lot of trauma that she dumped on me. But then I was like, but mom, I have to make it with food. And she's like, oh, okay. So it kind of makes sense that you would wait until the last. Because by the time we get that to the school, the cracker is going to be all like moldy right, <laughs> right. Yeah. so uh would you still try a spiked punch ponche is that different than punch is that a spanish pronunciation of punch yes okay <laughs> well uh sure why not um but yes no gingerbread houses nah. is there any traditions that i'm missing that you guys have done because that's pretty much everything i did our christmases were pretty much uniform for the entirety of my childhood up until yeah, until the holiday party started fading in just attendance. That's really, yeah. and that, that really only came to a head last year. So, the money line presents, <laughs> uh, fireworks. Oh, We've right. had a quite an adventurous episode this time right. around. When you were talking about school stuff, like we did read Too Many Tamales in elementary school. Uh, Ooh, too Many Tamales? That's too a book. Many tamales. Yeah. Too Many. Oh, shit. That's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, I think I might have read that at least once in one of the grades. It's not one that we did all the time. But yeah, it's I like know a the cover. third grade book, I believe. Too many th- Gary Soto's from the Valley. That's why we read it. Yeah, he's from Central Valley. Gary Soto, he had another poet and stuff like that. That's yeah. There we go. I remember that. I like corridos. Yeah. <laughs> That's one line I remember from one of his books that we read in like sixth grade. What do you say? <laughs> I like corridos. Oh, <laughs> you're like, I like corridos too. I feel represented. And that's what this episode's all about. Representation. One last thing though. I didn't know. Actually, I, I, did, I did know and then got reminded of. Coming up, December 12th, talking about holidays, JJ. It's literally the most Mexican lady holiday of all time, Dia de Guadalupe. So, yeah. It's, uh, I didn't know this until I was old enough to like remember things. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, so I recently found out that my dad shares a birthday with Tay Tay. Taylor Swift? Yes. Oh, okay. And does he shake it off? He does. Okay. Just making sure. And now, from now until the day he dies, his birthday song is going to be 22. I'm going to play that. I don't know about you. (laughs) He's going to be feeling 22 (laughs) 22 until the day he dies. Dad, Dad, you were 75 years old. You're feeling 22. I straight up looked it up, though, at a certain point, and I was like, 
there are they don't give that award to entertainers very often. Oh, the people's <laughs> that person of the year? Yeah, no, 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 it's literally hey, all. What are you talking about? Hey, Dory, two thousand six. It was me. <laughs> it's true. Hey, don't. Every time about Marcos, nothing's happening. There's nothing happening. Just Taylor Swift, person of the year. Don't worry about it. There's no other people. No other people that need to be mentioned or anything happening in the world. Oh, okay, Ukraine so was last year. Zelensky was last year. Zelowski, whatever his oh, name is. Oh no, no other war don't look, happened this nothing year. Happened. No nothing happened. No other. Nothing sad <laughs> ever happens. Nope. It's only Taylor Swift. Only, only Eras tours. If I can go on a random note for like just sure, seconds. we're already there. We're yeah. already there. I, I, well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> no Russian not, jokes. No. <laughs> okay. It's not a joke. It's okay. a serious statement. Okay. I just, like. I don't like how the censored block comes out for all that. Like, you can't say an opinion at all, pro or minus, and it's just like, you're gone. Which is why... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, what happened? (laughs) What happened to our thing? Oh, no, I'm cut from Scream 7. Oh, no. (laughs) So, Taylor Swift, back to to the important things. (laughs) Wait, what does that have to do with the verse of the Guadalupe? (laughs) Because it was a throwaway line that my grandma said one time. That was like, I always remember your dad's birthday because it's after La Virgen de Guadalupe. Ah. My dad's birthday is the 13th. Ah. What we should do now is get a picture of your dad and put him as, <laughs> as, as uh, I'm gonna Juan put Diego. him on the fucking Eras tour. <laughs> One, uh, do I get AI Mexican Mexican dad with Taylor Swift as a? Mm, I wonder. No, I'm not allowed. You know why? Because uh, I tried doing uh, AI Die Hard. Um, and they wouldn't let me because it said Bruce Willis, and they're like, "No, you're trying to create fraud." So Taylor Swift definitely cannot AI Taylor Swift as the Virgen de Guadalupe. I'm pretty sure some millennial fucking artist has done that on a candle. So give me like two seconds as you continue your story. If you have no other story, then give me a moment. I Google Taylor yeah, Swift Virgen de Guadalupe. About my dad? Sure, plenty. Uh, <laughs> actually, by the way, I was going to Google Taylor de Guadalupe. <laughs> That's not a real thing. Put that in the AI. That'll probably pop up copyright free. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. It was very easy to find. It's the first thing that shows up. God dang it. I'm so disappointed in you, Internet. How dare you? There you go, JJ. Go. Oh, what? Oh, Wait, I'm so confused. Oh, she actually dressed up. Did like she that. actually? Dr- no, that's Shakira. Nope, that's Taylor Swift with Virgen de Guadalupe boots. So there's a little bit of a crossover there. I'm pretty anyway, sure those are is. gifted. Has she point gotten is. a Doctor Simi? What's a Doctor Simi? Doctor Simi. Uh, so there is a popular chain of pharmacies in Mexico called Similares, and their mascot <laughs> is a pharmacist, a Rotund pharmacist, mustachio <laughs> pharmacist. Okay. His name is Dr. Simi because Simi Lattice. Uh, oh, Dr. Mm, Simi. <laughs> I get it. I don't want to, but I do. So, so it's like a Muppet. Yeah. That's why people love him. And it's a tradition in Mexico whenever someone performs, like a big name artist, uh-huh. you throw a plushie of Dr. Simi at them. <laughs> and I feel like I oh, want to perform in Mexico. Yeah, dude. <laughs> well, look, somebody had Dr. the idea. <laughs> Some people have had the idea. They made a Dr. C.B. Taylor Swift. <laughs> so, JJ, person of the year. Nothing else has happened, Marcos. Nothing else has happened. Nope. Uh, nope. But that's it for holiday traditions, unless we have anything else. Oh, I was talking about Dia de Guadalupe, like, for legitimate reasons, because it's, like, literally the most iconic thing in Mexican Catholic Christian history, Catholic history, is this right here, the Lady of Guadalupe. So, my best friend, like throughout a lot of high school, like his family is super native. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what tribe or anything. Like I just know he'd go to Mexico every summer and Mm -hmm. come back. And he's like, yeah, they straight up lied to us about like they none of them believe in El Virgen de Guadalupe and stuff like that. He was just like, that's straight up propaganda, so that we would. Oh, sorry. I don't know. No, 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 I swear to God, I was not trying to play you off. I swear to God, I was trying to play no, you off. No. So, what was this about? Other stories that are no, propaganda? No, he's just like. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The story is that um, that it's just propaganda. Like it's not. None of the story is real. Which, by the way, like I don't know, because you have to do three miracles to be a saint, right? I don't know what he did that was three miracles. It was like two. He saw her like twice. I know he saw her two separate days because she was like, come back with these flowers. And then he's like, okay, I'll come back with these flowers. And I think he brought the people. So I don't know, maybe seeing her, seeing her again with flowers and then bringing the people. <laughs> the third one is the episode of Wishbone. 
<laughs> JJ, I was trying to get out of here. Now I gotta look that up. <laughs> now I have to know what. So what do I? What do I even look up? Wishbone, Virgen. <laughs> it's there. It's filling it up. I'm telling you, <laughs> it oh exists. God. I'm not lying. lying. The whole episode's there. <laughs> What's the story, Wishbone? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? No, I believe in La Virgen. <laughs> 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 yeah! Wishbone's origin of Mexico! Well, uh, God damn, this is great. Yeah. The Aztecs had found their home. And That's Mexico. not what eagles in Mexico look like. It's a red-tailed hawk. <laughs> that, was the, that, was the, that was the easiest eagle look, they could find. It's public broadcasting. It's on a budget. <laughs> right. Because viewers like you didn't donate enough money, okay? They were, they were really was struggling. Like Mr. Seven. Rogers could have afforded to live in a way better neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Wishbone as an Aztec. Give it a second. Is he beheading someone? <laughs> No, he's no. ripping out their no, this is, hey, No, this is already after the fall of Tenochtitlan. Look at it. See, the conquistadors are here. When did the marbles show up? <laughs> it's just Droog, all right? conquest, some Aztecs began to accept the religion of these Oh, they just so happen to accept. The re uh, some Aztecs are like, yeah, well, yeah, you yeah, know what? This Jesus guy, not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when he's not stabbing me in the chest for not believing. One of these Aztecs. Wait, is he's the dude that found them? Yes! <laughs> Apparently he is Juan Diego, shit. Every Saturday he walked over Tepeyac Hill on his way to hear mass. <laughs> but this December morning... JJ, <laughs> what the... This, this December morning, yes. Very December in Mexico. It's all fucking sunny. Ordinary happened. Juan. Juan Diego. Yes? Juan was not scared. His heart was happy when he heard his voice. There it's yeah. Filipina Jesus, Mom. Stood a maiden, absolutely perfect. <laughs> oh fuck! I think this is Jesus' mom. Look how yeah. fucking intent he is. I think I ate the wrong cactus. <laughs> He's uh, up there looking at a fucking treat for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 it's the version of Guadalupe. You or, want peanut? You want peanut? <laughs> or bacon strips? <laughs> bacon, bacon, bacon. <laughs> yeah, see. Pazuzu was looking at me like that all day <laughs> when I was making my fucking fried rice. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, they're back. Oh, okay, they're back uh, in the real world. Boo! Yeah, it's lame. Boo! There you go. I don't go. care what Josh is doing. Well, give you such a sign for the bishop. Oh yeah, see, he had to go find a sign from the bishop, say that he wasn't full of shit. So. And trust me, and I will take care of you. Bet, my lady. <laughs> I just didn't know which bone talked. <laughs> yes, my lady. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, but there we go. We sure learned something today about Dog Juan Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Which is now my new rap name. <laughs> is that dog? Is that dog? <laughs> is that dog Juan Diego? I got that dog in me. <laughs> I got that Juan Diego dog in me. Huh? Look, see, you got the flowers. Get back to something new until the day he dies. There you go. Look at Wishbone said it. How could it be fake, Marcos? How is that propaganda, all right? That is Wishbone historical accuracy right there. I want to see Wishbone tell the story of Joan of Arc. Let's see how he does that one. <laughs> he did a, I think he did do that episode. <laughs> I watched a lot of Wishbone in my day. <laughs> and Omega Pink, you're a first time chatter. I don't know if you're a troll or not, but I do not kiss my dad on the mouth. Oh, that's, for, that's a line from... Uh, uh, smiling friends. <laughs> oh, I like smiling friends. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching the show. Ooh. Right there, man. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Happy New Year! Day by the people, Marco. Feliz Navidad. Ba 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 ba. JJ. Feliz Navidad. Ba 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 ba. Feliz Navidad. Adiós, gente. Prospero año y felicidad. Buenas noches. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. Gotta close my eyes. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart.